Hi, everyone, and welcome to Founders and Legends 3, The Dark Tide. I'm your Game Master, TJ Storm. And before we get started, uh, I want to thank our title sponsors, Idol Champions of the Forgotten Realms and Sirenscape, for making this event possible. I want to thank our product sponsors, Hero Forge and Mithril Armory. And finally, I want to thank Realmsmith and D&D for hosting our event on their channel, and Jason Alzavito and and uh, D D and D J Sirenscape during our game. Thank you, man. That is cute. Uh, now, of course, a huge thanks goes to Luke Gygax and the Gary Con crew for running the event. Thank you all, and uh, Luke, thank you for putting this together. It's my pleasure. This is just such a fantastic opportunity for us to get together. Uh, you know, play some epic adventures uh, with everyone, get to meet a lot of new people, raise money uh, for Extra Life, our charity. We are at over $3,000 right now. In fact, we hit that so fast, I had to raise uh, up to $5,000 for our goal. Who knows, if, it, if we get crazy, maybe we'll, uh, maybe we'll raise that one up as well. So uh, we learn about the industry, get to say thank you to some of our founders and current folks who are working hard and, 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 and doing wonderful things and raise money for sick kids. So uh, I thank you guys for being here. I really appreciate it. Now, after this stream, please stay tuned for Into the Mist. Uh, that starts at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. That's 8 p.m. Eastern Time. And it is with DM Jason Azevedo and Into the Mist cast, Nura Ibrahim and Matthew Mercer as Strap. So stay tuned for that later tonight. Our amazing sponsor, Sirenscape, is now giving away a one-year siren, a, a one-year super siren subscription to Sirenscape. Type Sirenscape in the chat to be entered to win. Now only one entry, uh, and no more than one entry, or you'll be disqualified uh, because we have so many people vying for this awesome super siren subscription. Uh, and if you haven't used Sirenscape, it is amazing. You're gonna love it. It creates so many incredible sounds, moods, and even battle music. It is spectacular. So. Jump in, put your name in the chat now, and that name is Sirenscape. Put the word Sirenscape in the chat now to win. Now let's meet our incredible cast of players. Players, please introduce yourselves. Who do you want to start? Hi. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, Kyle. I'm Kyle Vogt. Uh, I'll be playing Shirako, a Aarakocra bard, who's, uh, sorry, Aarakocra monk, not a bard who's having a, a little fun trip off the island where he grew up and has encountered these friends. Fantastic. I'll go next. Uh, I am Ben Looms. I am the creator of Sirenscape and I'm just, I really only made it for myself and it's super amazing that people are using it all over the world and to like kind of make the games more immersive and stuff and that just blows my mind. But you don't want our characters yet, is that right? Not yet. Not yet. It's a mystery. Nope, I did it. All right, I'll go next. <laughs> I'm Alicia Marie, and I'm an author and fitness pro and costume maker and cosplayer, and I've been a huge fan of D&D for years, but I just began playing about three months ago, so I'm probably the, young, the youngest player of the group. <laughs> I'm, I'll be playing Hina. She's a sorcerer, and uh, she's uh, pretty cool, so I'm excited to be here. <laughs> right. well, uh, I'm Luke Gygax. I'm, uh, I'm a soldier. I'm a father. Uh, full-time nerd, part-time author. I run uh, Founders and Legends, Gary Khan. Uh, like I said, do a little bit of writing. Uh, some Got some modules out there and stuff. Uh, yeah, that's, that, that's about it. I'll pass off the uh, ball to Christina. Hmm. Hi, my name is Christina Ariel. That's not my real voice. Um, I'm an actress and a cosplayer, mostly a tabletop RPG player doing stuff in the community, and I talk a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm uh, Tom DeSanto. I'm a writer and producer and uh, have done, uh, did X-Men 1 and 2, which was a movie I wanted to make since I was about 10. Yeah. Then also uh, helped relaunch Battlestar Galactica and uh, Transformers um, and Bumblebee, of course. Mm -hmm. right. It's TJ. Right. That's... Um, hmm. 
I don't actually see any of those names on the ship's manifest. Um, might you be going by another name? And if you could list your race and uh, general skill set, that would be nice. Um, any other names? Oh yes. Well, my name's my name's Tobias, bro brother Tobias. People call me. I worship the one true God. Uh, yes, I can generally be helpful with healing people, uh, picking people up, putting them together. Oh blasting people out of space it's fantastic I, I, i'm liking the sea air it reminds me of this one time when uh, what oh sorry yes yes oh jolly good yes everyone, everyone, stop, someone else go now brother twice got it yes well, I'm, I'm a human by the way i mean i, I would have hoped that was perfectly obvious i noticed you know, that yes. i noticed that thank, thank mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. hey, quentin oh my. i'm uh quentin xander you can call me quentin or you can call me xander whatever you're feeling like um, and depending on how much coffee you've had that day. Um, is there a chess club on board this ship by any chance? Or maybe, uh, uh, do we get a chance to maybe write an essay or anything? Um, uh, hard labor, mostly. Uh, hard labor? Okay. I have made chance hard, for that. Hard labor? Oh. You, perhaps you can help the navigator. But very good. Very, are you okay. human? Um, yes. I see. Human. Yes, human. Uh, and, uh, do a little bit of magic, you know, whatever impresses the ladies, you know. Oh, the ladies! A yeah. ladies' man! Yeah. <laughs> Got it? Yeah, ladies' man, that's, yeah, for sure. <laughs> My name is Cragnox. Uh, oh. Yeah. I, uh, I hit things hard. I'm, uh, an orc. I see, I see that, sir. Yeah. Oh, soon we've got a strong one here. Good. Welcome aboard. Welcome. Hey. Knowledge. Who's behind him? Anyone? I, I'm Sirocco. I, I was the one who helped set up this job. Um, I'm Eric Kokra. I, I practice physical arts and I like to, uh, I do the lookout a lot. I like to hang out in the crow's nest. <laughs> we thought of a spying. We thought of a spying. Excellent. That's good luck. That's good luck, that is. What did what, you say your name was? Uh, Sirocco. Sirocco. I've got one. That's good. Hey. Any All other? right. So, this is what we're going to do. You're going to act like you don't know me. You all look over and you see this woman. She strides confidently up to you, she puts her thumbs together, and starts moving her fingers. And you see, like, this frost and lightning sort of come off her fingertips and it dissipates. You're looking at Bar uh, Baru, human, female. She's a sorcerer, dark skin, 5'10", slender. She has white markings on her face, and she has long, dark hair, and it's sort of wild. And she has white, silver eyes. And she points to your little manifest and says, Hina, Hina Alu, the witch. Yes, I'm the great Sujata's younger sister. More powerful sister now. I assumed her powers when she was murdered. I have nothing to lose. So what a better way to test my new medal than to take Sirocco up on his offer. Oh. I may not know how to use all of my powers, but I do know how to use some very well. She's good. Oh, we got a witch. What, that's <laughs> nice. I'm not sure I'm completely comfortable with this, but you know, worth you know, d d loving and caring and putting up with and stuff like that. It's definitely a part of my job. <laughs> so nice. We'll see. Welcome, Guru. Sissy. I I am Nancisi, the unmatched. You don't pretend you've never heard of me. Oh. <laughs> I'm, seven, oh. I'm 17. I'm 17. And I've got a long history of being really, really good at a whole lot of stuff. And do you know what I am? What? <laughs> Amazing. Mm, well, if you want to know who I am, perhaps it's best said in song. I like songs. You can sing. I sing for you a shanty as we take to the seas a tale of the most fearsome bard the world did ever see. 
She's daring, bold, and colorful. I'm talking about me. The bravest <laughs> pilot sailing, and her name is non CC. But you can you can call me CC. The journey oh, began when good. I was three. Nice. Love that came for me. He stole into drink. my room one night, a terrible sight to see. They lowered him into my cot and placed him next to me. The battle raged, the war was fought, it got so physical. Oh yes, I won that battle I fought against my stuffed animals. <laughs> yes. Yeah, marvelous, yes. marvelous. Yes! Half of the crew immediately starts cheering and <laughs> they're happy to have you aboard. After the cheering stops, the first mate continues speaking. Right, well, that all checks out. Well, no, welcome to the Merry Bucket. You've all signed on for a one month search and salvage contract. We disembark in a 10 day. Uh, during that time, the captain has generously put us all up at the Brazen Hydra. It's the most popular tavern in Inn in Bilgewater, so consider it a signing bonus along with a four pence a day food and drink per diem. Um, oh, follow me and I'll take you there myself. It, it, right this way, could you sing that song again? That was wonderful. And he starts to move off for you guys to follow him, take you to the Brazen Hydra. Now, Excellent. you six have been friends since childhood. You've grown up here in the Serpent Isles, but you've all finally decided to make your big move to the land of opportunity here, the port city of Bilgewater. While incredibly dangerous, Bilgewater is ripe with opportunity and coin. You know that Bilgewater can be a place of new beginnings for no one on these twisted streets cares about where you came from. You follow the first mate through the salvage docks and then through the slaughter docks, all around you is li the lively hustle and bustle of people working and going about their business. And then in the distance, you hear oyster shells and cockroaches. Oyster shells and cockroaches. You follow the sound to a young girl, younger even than Cece, and she's pushing a cart. And she looks over at you and she double takes upon seeing Sirocco the Aarakocra, the Vestayan Birdman. She stops, and then she gets into her thing, she opens it up, she takes off some of the things that she pulled up, some oysters. Yo, Vestayan, your mother said there must be an offering for you. Oh, you know, look, thank you. Is, thank you. Oh, and reach out kind and take it. Act. Oh, no, 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 no. And um, could I offer any of you oysters, shells, cockles? They're she's good. A girl, she's probably 12, 13. Uh, I, I'm, I'm going to sniff them and see if they if they look, if, if are they in good shape? Are they fresh they're from very the sea? Fresh. Are they, yes. uh, they're very fresh. They're very fresh. Oh, well, I've always, always won for a meal. Yes. Uh, do we have any coin that we've been given in advance yet? Or? Yes. Yes, you have a bit of a coin. Oh, how so young, that's one piece Gladly pay you the appropriate. Yes, yes, here we are. Yeah, have some, have some oh, coin. Oh, thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, where are you from? You, you're from the Serpent Isles. I've not seen you before. Hmm. Ah, well, you should get to know me. Get to know me very well. I'll be blessing people in every way that I can in this area. Make, make, make sure that the love of the one true God... I, do you know about the one true God? Could I tell you in great detail at some point? Oh, Nugget, come on, Rose. <laughs> what was that? Naga Cabal Rose, come on, the bearded lady. Oh, oh, no, 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 this, 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 uh, um, oh, I don't know about that. I mean, though, of course, I'm prepared to be understanding and start from, everyone has to start from where they need to start, yes. <clears throat> oh, well, very good. A anyone else? Oysters, chairs, cockles? Uh, well, seeing as we're doing a bulk deal, do we get a discount? <laughs> um, yeah. Because I think that mathematically fair for us for providing a bulk situation for you. Um, yes, it's normally one pence for two. Great. I could give you four for eight. Awesome. Wait a second. Okay. Right? Mm-hmm. I suggest we be generous to this poor lassie. I mean, look at her shoes. They, they don't have many toes in them. I mean, have some heart, man. Uh, do you know what we're getting paid? I don't think we have the money to be. <laughs> this is an issue. <laughs> yeah. 
the first mate pays her and she gives you guys eight uh, shells. Uh, in this way, don't worry about her. She's always around every day. We get our lunch from her. Uh, follow me, follow me. And he guides you off. Goodbye. Goodbye, Vistayan. So Goodbye, well Lux. Goodbye, holy person. <laughs> and that's all. You cross through the slaughter docks and you move over the busy butcher's bridge. There is no doubt where the brazen hydra might be. It stands out even in this city. The bow portion of what was once a mighty galleon now converted into the most famous tavern in all of Bilgewater. And for the next week, the brazen hydra is your home. The faint sounds of revelry reach your ears and they even get louder as the front door opens. Now, Nansisi, there's a tall, lean man in a well-worn duster and a wide-brimmed hat. He comes out of the door and he locks eyes on you. And he's got a little smirk when he looks at your face. He flattens himself against the door as he holds it open for you. And he doesn't break eye contact. He continues to smile. It's my lucky day. And he tipped his hat. You bet it's your lucky day. Do you know how many men like you I've fought? I can take you down right now. Do you ever hear the story of how I un unsworded a man in the middle of a battle and I took his sword and I went, ee, 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 ee. He backs now, up. Now, come, come Cece. I mean, he's a perfect, he no, doesn't do anything aggressive. Just, just talk to the man in a nice way. Calm down, <laughs> calm down. He, it's imaginary, but it could hurt you. He squishes himself against the door and moves away from you. Charmed, I'm sure. And he pulls his hat back on and he walks out on the street. You guys enter the Brazen Hydra. You walk in and this place, there's nothing like this at home. Buzzing with people, drinking and singing. The first thing you see is a very large woman. She is on the table and she's arm wrestling with a, a guy, a Viking stock. But she's winning. She has got his hand halfway down and there's people all around her betting and throwing down money and laughing and having a wonderful time. Uh, Xander, a tall Buru woman. Now the Buru people are brown skin. Uh, now, how's the sound? Is it too loud? Is it? Uh, it's a little too loud. A little loud? Okay, yeah. thank you. Um, the Buru people are, they have the, the skin tone of maybe Samoans or Tongans. They have that sensibility. They're strong, they're, they're often wiry, or they can be meaty. But this is a tall, strong woman, slim, but strong. Uh, she turns towards you with a platter full of drinks. She's taking them over to her friends. Uh, from She sees you, Xander, and she looks at your staff, and she looks back at you. She puts the drinks down, and then she reaches out towards your head and lightly grabs your head. Give me an insight roll. Ooh. 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 Dun, 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 dun. Twelve. <laughs> you recognize this because you're part of the foreign, the Voodoo Cultural Foreign Exchange Program. You recognize <laughs> this as the beginning of the way that they greet each other. Do you allow it to happen? Uh, I do allow it to happen if it's culturally culturally appropriate. She grabs your head and she pulls you forward gently and she places your forehead against her forehead. Then she smiles when she understands that you understand this. And she pulls back just a little bit and looks at you in your face. A male priest of the bearded lady. You are so young. And a foreigner to boot. Keep our traditions alive. She gives you a copper piece in your hand. Keep our traditions alive. She squeezes your hand and she touches your cheek. I will do that. And there's nothing I'm more proud of in my life than being the first male priest in 100 years and I will carry on your traditions and spread them with the world. She looks at you. I am surprised you survived. 
But I am glad. She touches your cheek again. She picks up the drinks and she moves off. Uh, everybody roll perception checks. Good. Ooh, 18, 18. 18. Five. Five? <laughs> I was mesmerized. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Kyle, what was yours? You're mute, by the way. I could not tell you because you're mute. You're muted, Kyle. I got a 24. Oh. oh, 24 is it? You see another Vastayan, but this one is half ferret, half man. He's very long, but he still has a man's body put in this part, but he's covered in ferret fur. And he is leaning on the pool table, and you guys lock eyes just right before he's ready to shoot. <clears throat> and he stands up, and he's got a pipe sitting on the table. You're staring at me because I intrigue you. Uh, you want to play a game? <laughs> you want, do you want to play? He picks up the pipe. A game? What game? What game do you think? Get the pool table. Oh. Okay, I'll play. Okay, okay. okay give the stick, and you be guys begin <laughs> to play pool. Give me an acrobatics check. Okay. I got a natural 20, so that's a 25. Uh -huh. Natural 20. 20. Ooh. Roll those percentiles, buddy. And that gives out a number of... Luke, will you explain what's happening for the people at home oh. on a natural 20? Absolutely. Anytime we roll a nat 20 uh, during the game, whether it's the dungeon master or a player, we're going to shout it out, and then we're going to roll percentile dice and... Mm -hmm. Whatever is rolled there will be a bonus uh, donation to Extra Life from Founders and Legends. And cool. that percentile dice was an 88. 88? Ah, All right, good job. Nice. $80. Thank you. Um, I will come back to you in your natural 20. Luke Kragnox watches the woman slam the, arm, the, the guy's arm down <clears throat> because that's actually interesting. Then, and everybody cheers. <laughs> like, yes! <clears throat> she slowly stands up. She sees Hina across the room. She nods to Hina at a distance, but then she looks at you, Fragnox. You are strong. Yes, Fragnox strong. You strong for human. Yes, I am. And she stands up, and she's 6'6". Six, six. She's taller than <laughs> I maybe like you, Maybe you part orc. You look. I have not that gift, but Naga Kaboros has given me many other gifts in, besides. You are welcome in the islands. The islands need your strength. Naga Kaboros, walk with me. She pats you on the shoulder. She goes over to the bar and she talks to the bartender and the bartender uses both hands to pick up something really heavy and put it on the bar. Patong! And it's a massive lantern made of pure metal. It is really heavy. She grabs the lantern and she turns around. If you have religion or you're a religious type character, you may roll a religion check. When I say have religion, if you have a skill dot in it. I Ooh. got religion. <laughs> religion? Yes. 16. So I've got 16 religion. <laughs> God is sort of with me. Seven. I got a 24. <laughs> He's got religion more. <laughs> I got religion more. Xander, I will tell you this. You have heard of the truth bearer, for only the truth bearer carries that lantern. She is the high priestess of the of Naga Kaboros and its temples and churches. She is famous throughout all of the islands. Her name is Alawi. She walks through the place. She nods at Sisi in the in the way of the Buru. 
and she pauses when she glances at your staff on the way out. She looks down at you, way down at you, because you're a lot smaller than she is. So, you represent us now. A male and a foreigner. I hope you are strong. What is your name? My name is Xander. Quentin Xander. It is a pleasure to meet you, my lady. Your legend goes far beyond the shores of this island. And your message of love and light and truth and hope, you now have a new standard bearer. And I wish to follow in your footsteps. It is an honor to meet you, my lady. Remember that not motion is death. Always have motion. She squeezes your shoulder. And more than my name, take the name of Nagakaboros with you wherever you are. She squeezes your shoulder and she gives you a blessing. She touches the foreheads. Your next roll may be an advantage. Whatever that roll is, your very next roll will be an advantage. And she can walk out. Thank you. Does he have to carry the bell around everywhere with him now? <clears throat> No, she carries that with her. <laughs> she oh, doesn't give that away. <laughs> <laughs> like, here, have this. She walks out the door. Uh, you start to hear a local's voice drift to you over the revelry. Her voice is deep and it's intense, as is common for those born to the Serpent Isles. You follow the voice to see an older woman, the same woman that spoke to Xander when he first walked in. She's slim, but her wiry frame is strong. All around the wood chip table, uh, people lean in to listen as they drink. And so there I was, me and my crew digging through that cursed wreck, when suddenly, whoosh, something dark swooped from the horizon. I never felt so something so terrifying and cold in all my life. I tell you this, the ship is haunted, I say. We never should have pulled that wreck from the tides. From across the room, you hear somebody else say, Shut your pie hole, Tyler. Always with your mysterious mumbo jumbo. I've had it up to here. Shut it. And you see her look back at that person. That person over there on the other table, he's with his friends. It's a squat figure in dark clothes. Uh, he has a bald pate silver mutton chops that outlines meaty face. He's flanked and goaded by his two friends at the same table as him. The tall woman and the squat man quickly start throwing obscenities across the room at each other, uh, which the crowd, for the most part, enjoy. Is there anything you guys want to do in this place while you're doing it? While you're hearing I this? Think should, I think we should speak to this lady and get some more details. Perhaps if you if you keep your voice down, little lady, you won't uh, elicit such abuse from across the room. But tell us your story, which is very interesting. And, and, and she goes into detail. But even while that is happening, Chiraco, you finish your first game of pool. The same game that you started. You didn't actually give the other guy a chance. And he's like, is that how you how play the game? The game? <laughs> how, how did you do this? Have you never played pool before? You are no. shocking me. No. Is that how you play? Oh, did you play? Yeah, you think no. <laughs> are you supposed to four copper pieces? Okay. I take it, I <laughs> hide it in my feathers. Are you supposed to get a turn? <laughs> Give me a stick! Give me a stick! He takes his stick away from you. I wander off towards the, the group that's listening to the stories, <laughs> throwing an eye at him uh, as I go. Very good. Mm. So, there I was. Tala continues her story. The ship was dark and it is up on the hooks. It is up above the sandwich docks because it was quite a large ship. And wham! Everybody roll 27. Which, which, oh, what 20. are we rolling? Perception. Uh, just a flat 20. Tell me what it is. I got a four. I'm so engrossed. Natural 20. In oh, oh, insight. Yeah. 12. 12. 25. What, what are you showing me, Christina? 
That's a natural 20. Two yeah. 20s. Bam, bam. Three, bam. Both of you, please roll percentile dice for Luke. 46. 46. 93. Oh, you got 46? Seriously? And 93. Oh, 46 and 93. I see. Yeah. Oh. All right. Good job. Nice. Easy. Three. <laughs> Brother Tobias. $227 already. Wow. A male, a, a, a ale mug slaps you on the, on right between the head and your shoulder. Plank, and it splashed to you. It was, you're right next to Tala, right over her shoulder. And everybody jerks and looks. And you see mutton chops across the room. Oops. Anyway, I was for Tala. Shoot it. Tired of your stupid. And the, uh, gonna... the two friends are laughing their asses off. Yep. I'm just going to pick up, I'm going to start walking towards him. I'm going to pick up a chair or a stool on the way and <laughs> crack him over the head with it. <laughs> that, that is something you could absolutely do. Um, I will tell you that while you walk towards her, while you walk towards him, you have, you go around the table and you start moving through the people. Tala gets up on top of the table, runs across the table at him, runs onto another table and dives at him. You may all roll the hit to do. Whee! <laughs> and she's taking the matter into her own hands. I got a 13. <clears throat> Ooh. Brother Tobias with a 13. Two. Two. <laughs> uh, Shiraka, what do you have? Uh, got a 22. 22. And I got 10. I'm sorry, I'll come around for you just one second. Hina, what? Hina, what do you have, Alicia? A two. Thank you very much. Xander. Two, uh, uh, ten, rather. Sorry. Thank you. <laughs> now, Cece. Five. Oh, three. Thank you very much. And Craig Nuts. Twenty. Twenty. Uh, you see... Tala dive directly on top of the, the the people there. She just dives on all three of them. Um, she starts hitting mutton chops on the top of the head, but the other two start punching her in the back. She just throws an elbow back and you see one of their heads snap back, but she's getting overwhelmed because she's jumped into a small group of people, which was probably not the best strategic choice, but she is not obviously a, a daily fighter. That said, <clears throat> Shiraco, you, you see Cragnox moving across room. Is, do you want to back him up in any way? I know what this means. <clears throat> so uh, I'll launch myself up into the air yeah. and fly over. How far away are they? Uh, about 30 feet. Okay. So I'll fl fly 30 feet and I will take a shot at. Uh, one of them. Uh, Very good. You said there's two jumping on Tula's back. Uh huh. And there's and there's one, and one pinned underneath her. And she's got that one. I'll uh, I'll fly up and uh, just do a uh, an unarmed strike and mm -hmm. uh, a bonus unarmed strike against that guy and then fly back to where we were. Whoa! Nice. All right. Uh, give me that attack. As you rise into the air, everybody goes whoa. whoa. <laughs> Did not expect that. <laughs> And that is going to be that's uh an eighteen for the first one and on the bonus strike uh, I got a twenty three. You hit twice. And next up will be Craig Knox. He will have gotten there. Damage is 13, 13 points, and then fly back over to the group and then just sort of circle or hover over where everybody is. You never even touch standing. the ground. You take off, <clears throat> you come down diagonally, boom, 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 your feet start slapping the back of this guy's head. He turns around ready to hit somebody on the ground, and then he sees your feet go, and you just disappear. What he does see is Cragnox walking directly towards him, and he's like, oh, shit. 
<laughs> Ragnar, what do you want to do? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna stool I picked up. <laughs> do it. Which would be a critical, so I don't know how much a stool does for you, so I don't know. Uh, do you have proficiency with those kinds yeah. of weapons? I mean, I should. <laughs> it's, it's a rogue, but we'll just, we'll, we'll, you're right. We'll, we'll just call it a five points of bludgeoning, and we're going to give it a D4. What do you think? Just, just sort of like an armor tech. It just looks cool. I do five points. Yep. <laughs> give me a D4, and did you say it was a critical? Uh, only if I'm proficient in bar stool. So that Very good. Have <laughs> <drive. Pick it laughs> Uh, I rolled four, four points of damage, and my strength is a plus four as well, so. Oh. Uh, roll a 20-sided for me. Uh, one. A, a one? One. The bar stool explodes on his chest. I'm going to roll an athletic check. I rolled a two. You sent him across the table. Everything goes plain all over the floor amazing strength and once every once again you hear the entire bar go Ooh. <laughs> okay yes <laughs> brother tobias may the blessings of the one true god rain from heaven down upon you and a boom, boom, with a two two fists <laughs> oh and a natural 20 and a 19 Excellent. oh Oh, uh, three points of damage from each of these little babies. Wow. Now, and do you want the guy who's laying flat on the table, or do you want the other guy on the back of the, the table? Other, the other guy who's hurting this lovely lady, absolutely. Thank you very yeah, much. Yeah. Give me damage for him, and double that damage once on the 20. Ah, yes. So, so just as three for my unarmed strike, so a three and a six. And very bless good. you with these hard fists. <laughs> and percentile. And I need to roll a percentile die. Yes, yes. Woohoo. 70 above right. average, Seven slightly above right. average in every way. Yeah. Now, the second guy on Tala noticed that his friend just got shot across the table and flattened. And he looks at his friend and then he's like, what? And he turns directly around <laughs> into your fist coming straight through. He doesn't even see it. It is a cold cock. He's like, Punk, and his head snaps back but his eyes are crossed and he just melts to the ground. He is out. He is cold out. <laughs> yes. Xander. Um, I am going to rush over, and uh, the last remaining person, I'm going to throw down my staff of the serpent and see if we can do some constricting. Oh, OK. Ooh. Very good. Would you like to throw it towards the guy on the table or to the or towards the guy who's being pinned by Tala? Uh, we will throw it to the one that is being pinned by Tala. Very good. Um, she's like kind of on all fours and she's raining down punches and he's kind of doing this. So you are able to reach into the space in between them if that's what you would like. I think I would want to help her as um, that is where my uh, thoughts are going to protect. Uh, even though she doesn't need any protection, uh, <laughs> chivalry is still limping along inside my heart. Very good. And that begins, give me, th that thing changes with the action, with your will and the blessing of Nagakaboros, and it changes into a massive snake. Uh, what would you like to do? I would like the snake do a constrict. Mm -hmm. Give me that attack. I will do that. Hold on. Let's see here. And that is a 17. That will do. I'm going to do a strength check because he feels it and he's like, whoa! And he grabs the head as it starts to rotate around him. No! Nope. And he starts to <laughs> squeeze him <clears throat> tightly. Uh, Tala does not stop hitting him in the face. She bang, <laughs> bang, bang! She just starts to smash. Uh, Nancisi, what would you like to do? Uh, who's closest to me? 
The guy flat on his back is a little further away than the guy getting smashed in the face, but they're both <laughs> very, very close. <laughs> I'm going to go for the guy who's already on the ground, therefore not needing much for me to do. Very good. Um, <laughs> do, so right now, uh, give me a performance check. Yay. It's 14. Very good. Let me check something. My insight is a two. So you <laughs> literally run, jump on the same bench that Tala is pounding the guy on, jump onto the table that Kragnox knocked the guy flat on it, and you you do this right over the guy who's <laughs> flat on his back on the table. And he's been hit so many times so hard that when you show up in his face and go, he just, ah! he just screams <laughs> and the entire bar <laughs> sees it. and. You were able to look up and go, okay. what? And you freak him out. He he surrenders under your fist. He just shakes. He does not want any part of it. It is at this moment that you start to hear screams in the background. There are screams somewhere outside. People are screaming, but it's not coming from inside. It's not part of this fight. You can hear it, but you don't know what it is. Give me perception checks. Natural one. Oh. Uh, uh, Eleven. Nineteen. Fourteen. Fourteen. <laughs> who, who has the highest? Nineteen. Nineteen. Very good. You. You hear. Flint locks and blunderbusses going off in the far, far distance. Boom. <clears throat> Boom. And you also hear screams, lots of screaming, a riot or people running. It's maybe fear. Now, that said, Nancisi, you are eating the attention up at this moment. So you are so into this. What would you like to say to this man who you have defeated spiritually? You have crushed his spirit. But you have him under your fist. What would you like to say to him? <laughs> you know what's funny? You know how they always say you never kick a man when he's down? Because that says more about the man than it does about you. It says, your face is garbage. You smell like gutter water. There's no place that you can go. Succeed on a wisdom saving throw. And I cast vicious mockery. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> oddly, oddly, uh, not, or not oddly, it, you destroy it. <laughs> he just starts crying. It hurt uh. everything. You broke this man's spirit. <laughs> Let this that be a lesson to everybody. You don't want messes with non CC because I'm non CC the unmatched. <laughs> she is. She is unmatched. Get up, please. And he's done. The rest of you, you hear chaos. Absolute chaos outside. Um, I hear it. I hear yes. fire and someone shooting. Screams. Screaming. Screams. Guns. There are windows somewhere. Like a second story that we could a window that I could get to. Uh yes, there is a second story. Uh you you can start to move towards it. Yeah, then, I wanna you wanna get see what's going on. Yeah, we run outside. Start, yeah. You start to make a move for the second floor, you start to go towards the front door to have a look. That is when you start to hear the church bells ring in the distance. That, that can't be good. That's usually for something big, yeah. something in the town square or a warning of some kind. But every combatant in the Brazen Hydra pauses to listen to the chaos outside and the church bells of Nagagaboros ringing out. You, 
you, as you move towards the front door, you're the first to notice the heavy footsteps and running outside. As you approach the front door of the Brazen Hydra, it bursts open and a very large man, a captain from the look of his jacket and armor, strides in looking grim as death. He walks, he's maybe your size, maybe a touch bigger because he's got excellent boots and, and he's well decked out. He just marches right past you. There are people getting the hell out of his way. Customers nearly dive out of the way as he strides directly across the tavern uh, and stops to look around. Behind him, you see people running in the street. More men pour into the tavern, women too. All of them are pirates. All of them have the same tattoo markings. These are the markings for those of you who know, especially those of you who are Budu or have spent time in Bilgewater. Those are the markings of the, the jagged hooks. Every one of these people are hard looking and they've seen their share of violence, which makes them, it's even more, it makes you even more worried that they look a little unnerved. There's no doubt that they are hunters, they are weavers. These hard bastards are for lack of a better word, pirates. Oof. All of you who have investigation, history or persuasion, because you may have talked to people and they may have shared their stories with you. You may roll that now. Investigation, history, or persuasion, whatever works best for you. Those of you who have a sailor or a pirate background, I'll give you advantage on. <laughs> Eight. <laughs> Please. Twenty-four. Yeah. Twenty-three. Oh yes. Persuasion. I would hate to, the twenty. CC, what is your that in? Uh, 24, uh, investigation. And, uh... Oh, oh no, uh, persuasion, persuasion. Persuasion, thank you. Hina, what is yours in? 23, persuasion. Thank you. Do you want to go back? Yeah, let us, let us know. No. Let us know where to go back to. How, or just, how far did we lose... To? Yeah. Oh, so they can still hear us? Mm -hmm. You just need to tell us where to start from if we need to go back a bit, that's all. Thank you. You guys are all awesome. It's so good having so much fun. Yes. This is fun. And the sun is the sun is rising in Australia. It's very cool. Oh, that's so cool. <laughs> <It's outside. laughs> is that a projector behind you? Yes. Yeah, yeah. See the whole big wall there? It's like kind of like I don't know, 12 feet wide or something. We, we project our family movies on there. It's so, so fun. It's lovely. Okay. We've, we've been watching um, Deep Space Nine as our entire family. Oh! Kids <laughs> Love it. From every episode yeah. from the very <laughs> beginning. And um, Garrick just turned up and wow, Garrick, what a character. It's just such oh. amazing work. Yeah. Anyway, it's lots of fun. And my daughter, can I just say, is a, is a massive, 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 huge, enormous Bumblebee fan. So thank you for writing that movie. It's awesome. What a character. What a fantastic female character. Yeah, it was a, it's, a great, it. uh, it's a great team sport. And actually, yeah. Michael Pilter was one of my mentors. I went to school with his son, Sean, and um, Michael co-created Deep Space Nine. And, uh, oh, really? For, yeah, for, for Star Trek. Wow. He's an amazing yeah. guy. Yeah. Such great characters, and it's just we're just just in the second series, and it's just amazing seeing them. Just let's just add another whole layer. I mean, we watched it in bits and pieces, oh, like okay. probably the whole thing in the past. But to watch every episode in a row and just see the writers think about what, what we want to expand on now and who we want to develop, and and it's really interesting. They're just building, building, building. Yeah, it's very cool. Yeah, um, it was. Uh, I, I originally went to Michael for a Galactica because I really yeah. admire. Uh, and Ron Moore was actually under, um, Brandon Braga and Ron Moore were under Michael Pillar, and he was one of their mentors as well. Hmm. Uh, wow. wow. Michael Interesting, did, it? fortunately, in the past. Uh, hmm. But an amazing, amazing heart. And uh, he really focused on the human condition, which I think sometimes yeah. in genre, it disappears. <laughs> yes, it does. Brand, one, two through five. <laughs> yes, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> the BBC has been playing the all the Star Treks that they got licensed, uh, which includes yeah. Deep Space Nine. They'll just do like all day long. So they'll chew through the entire series in about 
two, three weeks. That's insane. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny. Cool. I think the week Comic Con would be going on if it wasn't for uh, COVID. Wow, really? Uh, yeah, it's, it's Comic Con. Yeah. Wow. Intense. Yeah, it's been so weird. I haven't, yeah, I haven't been out of Australia yeah, all year. And you're normally I'm at all these different cons and playing with people all yeah. over the world and mm -hmm. flying tons. And yeah, it's super duper yeah, we weird. We were lucky enough last year, we did a um, final convention appearance for Michelle Nichols. Uh, and, uh, she was retiring as she's um, mm -hmm. getting older and just can't do it anymore. But it was such a, a, a cool thing to be part of that last year at the con. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. Part of yeah, it's sad to think of, of uh, yeah, the people who will be missed out on their last show or, or yeah, aren't going to be able to do the special plans they're going to do. Yeah, I really feel bad for kids like you're 17, 18, graduating high school or all those big things yeah. that you're going to not ever be able to get back. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, totally. Sorry, <laughs> we started talking about sad You guys things. are going to make gonna... me cry. <laughs> That's all right. I'm going to stop. <laughs> If we make a will save, oh, I failed again, damn it. <laughs> That'll be three months it worth of failed will saves. <laughs> I have ever seen. Uh, so kudos to you all. Um, you're, you're all kick kicking butt. It's very, very uh, yeah. impressive. Yeah, it's fun. You guys are amazing. Lots I love the teenage. I love Susie. She's so fantastic. Yeah. I love the, I love the pauses you keep putting in the middle of sentences as she tries to like think of the cool things. Uh, say it's it's so lovely it's so inspiring um yeah i think ben i think we've had the conversation about my love for the sad trombone like yeah. i keep sirenscape on my phone and whenever my son says something like and we're in the middle of a conversation and i'm trying to mess with them like when we're picking out a movie for dinner and he'll be like Can we uh, i'm like brr, brr, brr. excellent it is well, must the always best thing that ever happened yeah. to me yeah, it has to be on hand at all possible moments, definitely. <laughs> no, it really is. so different. It's just awesome to see. Yeah, and I love that cool. you, uh, you two juxtapose each other between Hina and Cece. It's like the opposite ends of uh, uh, woman power, <laughs> which yeah, is great. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Super cool. Hina's like, I look like... The Powerpuff Girls. You know, you to... <clears throat> Powerpuff Girls, yeah. I'm Bubbles! You are bubbles. <laughs> <laughs> Especially when the bubbles goes hardcore. The I'm going to run to the loo if I've got five seconds. So, yeah, that's where I am. I think so. It's okay. still buffering, it says. Especially when bubbles Why goes hardcore. I thought it was funny. Oh, my God. Yeah. His head has disappeared. <laughs> when, you, when you lean back, it blinked into the background. <laughs> like a headless torso and there was very scary. <laughs> Wait, is there green in your hair? No, oh, now you're floating. Now you're like in the uh, water. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's <awesome>. ridiculous. <laughs> oh man. That's fun. I was really excited about this game all week. I've like been looking forward to it. It's like oh, I'm super glad. I'm glad I'm glad that you could play. That's awesome. I just uh, Yeah, you all make me want to go do an animated show and just so we all work to <laughs> You put us on camera too. I wanna be a cartoon. I would watch me. <laughs> <laughs> I would watch all I think oh my you gosh, I love watch C C that's the thing. You would definitely watch CC. Ooh, I have to tell you a funny story. So, one, X Men is my thing with my dad. Like, we like watch X Men the animated series, read the comic books, all that great stuff. I love him. But so we like played X Men the board game, and we would fan cast while we played. And so my two number one fan casts were Kelsey Grammer for Beast, and of course Professor Xavier is obviously Patrick Stewart. And so like when we would play, that was how I saw it in my head, and I would like think of him, but it was like Picard mm -hmm. as. Professor Xavier, and it the was holodeck? like, <laughs> bro, so the think funny about thing it. Was, it'd be so good. When we yeah. uh, approached Patrick initially, he didn't want to do the movie because he was trying to put genre stuff behind him. That was when actors really <laughs> felt yeah. so typecast that um, 
<laughs> and it took all of this convincing for him to do it. Initially, he turned the movie down. And you can't, yeah. I mean, there's who else do you get for that part? I mean, Patrick, it is amazing. James McAvoy, apparently. <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Not my I think world. about that transition, like when he goes like in Apocalypse, where he's suddenly bald, and you're just like, "Ah, yeah. that's how it happens." <laughs> but then that also like, don't get me going. I'll go down like a whole rabbit hole of my like <laughs> Charles Xavier theories of his like Jean Grey obsession. Oh, Jean mm. <laughs> caused enough Sorry, problems. I go for on uh, yeah, it was interesting. The third one was supposed to be Anthony Hopkins playing Sebastian Shaw. That would have been good. Yeah. That would have been, been awesome. Funny. Yeah. Uh, it was funny at the Stan Lee um, tribute last year, I saw Lawrence Fishburne, and we were in negotiations with Lawrence to play Beast in the first X Men, <laughs> but then the studio made us cut $3 million out. So we had a Beast Ouch. was such a character. Uh, mm -hmm. With the man, and we, so we had to cut that in the danger room. Huh. But uh, I I, or was it the one at the at the theater at the? Um, yeah, the at the film? theater. At the I think I yeah. interviewed you. I think I might oh, have interviewed yeah. you on the carpet. Uh -huh. I had like the braids and the bright blue lipstick. Okay. <laughs> yes. I remember that. You are a chameleon. <laughs> change the hair, change the person. I understand. See, I put the vest on. <laughs> recognize it <laughs> I, that is a, it's like very great and also very never mind that's terrible i was i just okay still TJ, yeah. what what have you still got sounds coming and then i'll, I'll... That fight is 
absolutely incredible. And with Cece standing over the defeated guy that she used vicious mockery on, she poises her fist over him, but instead talks to him. And for some reason, he begins to cry. It is at that moment <laughs> that you guys begin to start to hear screams outside. You hear gunshots outside. Not long after that, you start to hear footsteps. The front door of the Brazen Hydra explodes open. Everybody roll... Uh, give me perception checks. 16. 21. 14. 20. Dirty 20. 5. 12. Very good. Very good. Uh, Craig Knox, you hear the heavy footfalls of heavy boots, especially because you're close to the front door. But every combatant in the Brazen Hydra pauses to listen to the chaos outside. The fight stops. And now the bells of the Church of Nagakaboros begin to ring out. That is not a good thing. You hear several heavy footsteps running outside. The front door of the bay Brazen Hydra bursts open, and a very large man, a captain from the look of him, from the look of his jacket, from his armor, from his hat, strides in looking grim as death. Customers dive out of the way as he strides directly into the middle of the tavern. He stops and looks around. Behind him, you see people running in the street. More men pour into the tavern, women too, 15, then 20, then 25 of them, every one of them hard looking, like they've seen their share of violence, which makes the fact that they look worried even more unnerving. There is no doubt that they are hunters, they are reavers. These hard bastards are, for lack of a better word, pirates. Some of you have given me your investigation roles in the chat and your perception roles in the chat. Cece, Hina, you know this captain. You look at him, even as he looks up, the sunlight falls across his face. <clears throat> then, slowly, it disappears as if clouds have swallowed the sun. But you have definitely seen his face. Everyone who lives in Bilgewater has. Even Mutton Chops, who is constricted by the snake. He looks more worried about that man standing in the center of the room than he does about the large constrictor wrapped around his body. He begins to tear and cry. That man standing in front of you was rumored to be dead. The Reaver King of Bilgewater, Captain Gangplank. Captain <clears throat> Gangplank, replete in jagged armor and dark demeanor and surrounded by his crew with jagged hooks. Gangplank looks over to his crew, batten down the hatches, and they get to work. Everyone in the tavern backs away as the weavers flip tables onto their sides, send ale mugs flying all over the place and plates spinning. These pirates slam heavy wooden tables against windows, blocking the view outside. They slam the door shut, lock them, and secure them with chairs. Gangplank walks straight through all of this chaos, moves behind the bar, and the bartender backs away and then climbs out the other side as if his life depends on it. Good, good, sir. Good, good, sir. T tell us what's happening. We, we, we come barging in here and create a ruckus. Some of the pirates step to you while they're doing their 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 work. Gangplank himself pays you no mind. He pulls down a jar of Shareem and rum, pulls the cork out with his teeth, and takes a deep drag as his men slam the front door shut and wedge a large table against it. The captain glances at you, then he glances past you, and he does this. A large Vestayan pirate comes over and dusts off an orange and hands it to Gangplank. <laughs> Gangplank looks at you, <laughs> Brother Tobias, and he bites into the orange. He does not peel the orange, but he does bite directly into it. Okay. I try and look uh, confident, which is not very easy. <laughs> <laughs> the juice runs down his face. <laughs> but he just keeps on chewing and looking at you. What is unnerving 
is that you can hear the eating because everyone in this place is deathly still. The, cus the customers are still looking at the pirate, and the pirates are still looking nervous. They seem to be <laughs> listening, trying to see past the barriers they've erected. They're trying to look directly through the wall. You hear the screams from outside subside. Is there anything that you guys <laughs> want to do? Yeah, you better be quiet. Some of the pirates look over it. <laughs> Suddenly, I don't have a death face, uh... <laughs> He puts the orange on the bar, and in one explosive movement, he stands, and the blunderbuss in his hand points towards the eastern wall. A second later, every pirate in the room reorients their weapons, whether it's blade or forearm, and they point towards the same place. You feel it in the floorboards first. A deep, depressed rum in the in the floor, floor in the in the floorboards. It gently causes the liquor bottles behind the bar to shake. Then you hear it. You hear footsteps. Then you hear something else. Oysters, shells, <laughs> oh, oysters, shells. What is that? Does anyone know what that is? That, that, <laughs> was that that little girl? Oh God, what did I eat? Everyone follows the sound of those horrible footsteps until you see through a small section of exposed windows that isn't covered by tables yet. You see the form of a small girl walking. Underfoot and around her flesh, she's embraced by a black mist that churns around her, suspending her small feet inches off the ground. She walks in profile, but comes to a stop in front of that exposed bit of window. She begins to slowly, slowly turn her head, even as she speaks. All of a sudden, a very nervous, very, my eyes are going, a very nervous <clears throat> pirate <clears throat> places a small table against the window, covering it. He drips fear induced sweat. He dare not move, holding his breath as if he's worked walking on explosives, but he cuts your vision off from the girl. He backs away, but you hear the word. Uh, 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 what, what should we do? Is, is, is there some creature out there? Is it going to come and eat our souls? Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Yes, yes. I won't say anything. Be quiet. Everyone be quiet. Just stop, stop, stop. Just stop. stop. Okay. He puts his hand <laughs> in your mouth. And every What's weapon that? in the room follows the footsteps as it moves down the wall and towards the front door. I'm gonna like jump up on the bar and get out my longbow if anything. Your longbow was out. Yeah, I draw my I have mace. Can we just tell her we're not hungry? <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't the one who tried to barter with the girl and push her down on the price so she has to starve even though she doesn't have shoes. <laughs> it gets to the front door and you see a green glow through the cracks of the wood. But then you hear the footsteps walk away. Uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, 
And Clank picks up his orange, puts away his gun, <laughs> and he leans on the bar. A reckoning approaches. It appears the har harrowing is upon us. Petty officer, take some men and secure the top decks. Some of the men run upstairs and put door stuff on the doors and windows up there. One of the people is like, do you know what the harrowing is? If you would could find yeah, yeah. to hold this again. What? What? Talia. Everybody knows Hello? what the harrowing is. What do you say? Oh, I, I, Tal Talia, do you know? What What's the harrowing? <laughs> What's the harrowing? A lot of the pirates stop and look at you and then look over at Gangplank. Many are the grim tales told of the Shadow Isles and the black mist that surrounds them, far to the south and east. And while all wise captains shun that cursed land, sometimes it hungers, its darkness must feed. The black mist ebbs and flows like the tide, yet now and then, on a night much like tonight, it reaches far across the sea, searching seeking killing this time is known as the harrowing the spirits of the shadow isles go forth in those black mists preying on the living feeding the darkness now you people are probably thinking to yourself that the de facto leader of bilgewater captain fortune will be sending help along now any minute but misfortune is still wet behind the ears She's not fit to do what needs doing, but I intend to save my Bilgewater. Me and my jagged hooks will meet the heroine on the open sea so I can cut off its head, but I will require some volunteers to find the heart of it here in the city and cut that out. He leans on the bar and he looks at all of you. Hmm. But you're saying it's safe in this bar, is, is it? No. Um, hmm. Not for long. Oh. Once we leave, you're on your own. Uh, 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 what do the volunteers have to do? Cut, cut out something like. Uh, cut out the heart of the harrowing, assuming you can find it. You hear a voice go, I. I think I might know where it is. The woman you helped, Tala, <clears throat> she puts her hand on your shoulder as she walks by you. I believe it is the Phantom Ire in the South Edge docks. And you see all of the pirates go, Phantom Ire, Phantom Ire, it's here. And he looks over at his, one of his pirates and he does this and that pirate walks over and puts a bag of coins in her hand. Thank you for that. Hmm. So then, will I have any volunteers to save the city, my city, and perhaps gain my favor? We all volunteer. Uh, I volunteer. Uh, and the place rotates towards Cece. <laughs> <laughs> is there any involved with volunteering or is volunteering a, a cash free thing is that what you say out loud yeah uh the pirates that are near you step away from you <laughs> and he looks towards you give me an insight roll xander <clears throat> <laughs> Difficulty easy. <laughs> Seventeen. Ah. Pirates would respect a cash reward. Xander, <laughs> you they honor it though. Xander, <laughs> you you are pretty sharp. You are you are almost sure that this hard. Now his 
Part of his skin is melted. He's been through fires. He's got scars all over him. He glances at you for a second. <laughs> then he looks back at the bar. You see his jaws flex. You are almost, you are almost sure that he's suppressing a smile. Just, you're almost sure. You're not sure though. As for you, Cece, he looks back at you. Approach, girl. <laughs> What? You walk. You walk. <laughs> <laughs> you see the Vestayan behind him. The, the Vestayan behind him. Vestayans are usually half animal. He looks like a polar bear. When you say what, he pulls out. He starts to pull out his his saber, and you see Gangplank look over his shoulder, and he puts it back, and he looks up at the rest. <laughs> This girl has just earned herself 20 Kraken because she has the guts that none of you do. By the way, you guys have had a full half serpent in your entire life to rub together. Uh, a couple of serpents may add up to a silver serpent. A, silver, a bunch of silver serpents will, will add up to a gold serpent and a pile of gold serpents add up to a Kraken. You have just... Oh earned something significant now then does she have any friends that will stand beside her oh yes yes, 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 her? yes, yes, oh, yes, yes. <laughs> all of a sudden everybody rushes out <laughs> we don't need your money <laughs> all of those people who are rushing out freeze <laughs> and he he looks back down at you you would be wise to listen to your skinny friend. Coin will get you places, child. But I respect your heart. And he looks at Xander again. And you've brave friends, and that's worth something. Yes, yes. <laughs> well, at least we stick together. I mean, we do care for each other, you know, and everything. Uh, if there's danger involved, we must have each other's back is not something that one moves against alone. 20 gold krakens per head. If you have the brass to board the Phantom Ire, blow it to kingdom come and sink it to the depths of Bilgewater Bay. He snaps his fingers and the Vestayan puts down a massive net of carrying stuff and he starts putting casks out on the, on the uh, bar. Each cask has gangplanks marking on it, the marks of the jagged hooks. And the Vestayan says, and he pats it lightly. <laughs> Fire powder. Careful. And he goes, take these four kegs and see that the Phantom Ire kisses the bottom of Bilgewater Bay. But beware, the harrowing will not be kind to you. Do you understand it? Yes. He turns and looks at you, and his eyes get a little bit bigger, just a little bit. He touches his head and he touches his heart for just a second because he recognizes what you are, Hina. Mm -hmm. You are friends with these. I'm not afraid. I've been waiting for this, and what do I have to lose anyway? He nods. Get them to where they need to go. Take the underdogs. Two pirates jump up, and they're ready to take you if you guys are ready to go. We are ready. Let's go. Yes. Excellent. Yes. Very good. I will take my staff back. Mm -hmm. uh, you have left that guy in a small puddle. <laughs> he does not move. Once the snake walks off, <laughs> kind of is unrolled and faced towards the wall. He just sits there because he wants to be unnoticed for a very long time. He just sits there and trembles. <laughs> Excellent. The guy who is laid flat on his back, there is... Uh, a, a boy sitting at that table who was watching the whole thing and how CC talked him into submission. 
that guy's still laying on the table, and the boy's like, hey, you got your ass kicked. <laughs> and the guy just was, he's done. You guys go behind the bar, and as you go behind the bar, uh, Gangplank says, give them what they need. See that they're outfitted properly. And when you're done, come find me for a proper reward. The Bastion turns around and opens the pack, and he gives you each a potion of greater healing and an orange. Excellent. Ha 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 ha. What? And an orange. And an orange. <laughs> the best, can they be the same thing? <laughs> no, no, the potion of greater healing is. Uh, it, it's, the, it's in a. An iron vial. The okay, okay. orange is a potion of normal healing. Consider it a potion of healing. You don't know why they're they're grown like this. They have a slight red tinge to them, but you have a potion of healing and a potion of greater healing. Mm. Do, do you want to tell us real quick what they do? What dice they do? Uh, it is. I will look that up. I, I want to say it's forty-four yeah. plus four or something like that. I'll take that. And then the normal one, I will have to look up. Yeah, someone look it up and just stick it in chat. Yes, please. Oh, yeah. it was 2d4 plus 2. 2d4 Ooh. plus 2 is the normal one, and 44 is for the greater, is that right? <clears throat> yeah, for the, the basic and the next one up. Very good. Thank so we're carrying these four drums. Uh, I'm strong, and I always like to look strong. Uh, uh, you know, Finger put the you cask is right. about I take a barrel. Great. Excellent. Oh, that's good. That's good. I carry Excellent. one. I'll, I'll take two. Very good. You have no problem with it. I'll look impressed. I am weak, but I always like to appear strong. So I will <laughs> ignore the balance altogether. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. I'll grab the last one. Thank you. <laughs> As you march around uh, and, and prepare yourself, huh? Gangplank is stirring at CC. Girl, you've got fire in your belly. A lot of fat. I haven't eaten any fire. You were born with it. And that's where it resides. He pulls out a dagger and he hands it to you. A plus one dagger. Has barnacles on it. I see you know what to do with that. Stab, 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 stab. He doesn't flinch. He suppresses <laughs> another smile. You remind me of someone I used to know. I'm bring not them. You are not. But bring that back to me. Plus one, yay. Thank you. They open the secret door in the floor here. And they start to crawl down to the underdocks. She didn't know you could get there behind the bar from here, but apparently you can. Hmm. Can we can we are we all walking can we walk in like a wedge in slight slow motion looking awesome, especially with my barrel under my arm? <laughs> You absolutely do. <laughs> no, because I'm, done, I, I'm going to be flying. <laughs> Very good. flying in slow motion, even better. Yeah. I want a close up of the wingtip sort of quivering in, in the wind. That sounds awesome. It's the whole albatross looking, so it's like white feathers with black feathers down oh, at the, the, sure. the tips oh, and edges yeah. and a awesome. little black eyeliner and the black on the, the wrists yeah. and ankles. And yeah, it's yeah. so cool. Yeah. I'll so cast fly right into the camera. Uh, You'll cast what? Underneath them, so that you they all fall. Say that again. What is it? I'm going to cast grease underneath them, so they all fall. With <laughs> no. <laughs> really? No. Oh, I'm just trying to uh, lady. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I have. Looking awesome is almost all I have. Uh, right. So, is it dark underneath? It is. You guys are following the two pirates that are assigned to you to take you to where you need to go through the underducks. Um, they both have <clears throat> they both have 
small lanterns that are hooded. They're keeping the hood lamp, uh, lamps low so it just lights your feet. May I cast a... Um, it's, oh, so it's, it's, we can still see, but it's dark. You can still see. It's just you don't want to spread too much light, or at least they don't. They don't want to spread too much light right away. I shouldn't cast Ooh, light. Or... Yeah, I can. Can you? You're gonna cast light. You cast they light. They don't. Like. They don't appear. Yeah, I can cast light. light. Do you want to I... cast light? Because they don't want to. You can tell. Hmm. We're trying to be overt. <laughs> uh, involving me in light. I can friend. cast light. I can cast light because I have a drift globe too. Yeah, ca cast light, but then put it under a bushel. You know, keep it in a cloth or something so you can bring it out when you need it. Oh, that's a good idea. Okay, I will do that. Good idea, brother Tobias. <laughs> Very good. Light lights up under a small cloth, and you keep it hooded as well. And now you can see yeah. in your immediate area as well. Twenty feet. Very right. good. Very good. It is done. And my friends, because I know science really well, let's limit our maybe fire-based spells if we need to use anything until this uh, fire powder is safely <clears throat> aboard the ship. You guys start to move. And the pirates stop halfway down the stairwell and they turn back towards you. Oi! <laughs> Dang. <laughs> On Pixel, this is Conor Moran. So, here's the thing. We're the leaders until we get you to where you're going. Do you understand? Yep. All right, all right, right, right. What's your names? Quentin. Xander. Xander, got it. Greg Come on, Greg. baby. Let's pull them out. You don't know our names. There's a black mist that's screwing up people, and we got to go stop it. So, speak up, everybody. There's Quentin. I'm Sraco. There's brother Thomas. That's Kragnock. There's CC, and that's Hina. Perfect. CC is great. Give me a minute. What? He turns, and the other pirate whispers in his ear. Now, somebody's stealing our skiff. We got to get down there fast. Come on. And he starts to hustle down the stairs really, really fast. In and he, at the bottom of the stairs, he he snuffs out his light. In the distance, you see more lanterns bouncing around right near the end of a dock. That's our boat. Don't let them get away with our boat. Go forward, get him, go get him and do something. Or we'll sneak around the backside. Come on. Go. Okay, uh, using stealth, I'm going to try to fly over and start stopping the people stealing the boat. All right, you move forward. The rest of you, what do you want to do? Uh, I'm going to use stealth and try to move forward to, uh, you know, stealthily get to the boat. Uh, you two give me stealth rolls, please. 14. Disadvantage on stealth uh, is not a really good thing. Dirty 20. Ooh. Very good. Very good. So you two advance. There's only two people here, uh, but they are dressed similarly. They look like pirates as well. But you guys outnumber them. You could probably, if you wanted to, scare them away instead of beating them down, but it's up to you. I'm going to cast Minor Illusion. Okay. And use it to create some of that black mist. I'm going to have it come up out of the water and slowly creep over the boat and make sort of this sinister shape and then slowly creep towards them. Cool. Same mist that uh, was around the little girl. Very good. Uh, give me a performance check or and our and our or an arcana check because that is your art. Uh, performance was eighteen. Very good. Let me see. And what are they seeing? They see the black mist that we saw surrounding the little girl oh. rise up out of the water around the boat, and slowly creep over the boat towards them, like it wants to wrap around them and possess them. They back 
away immediately. You see their bodies stiffen up and they back away. One slaps the other and points. And you see it crawl up over the top of their lantern, which is still on the boat. And they run. With a five and a nine wisdom check, they take <laughs> off. They go fast. <laughs> One has a lantern and they are sprinting. One trips on the way, but they're gone. Congratulations, you've defeated two pirates without actually meeting two pirates. They are out of there. Oh, yes, and no one got their head smashed in, which is a good thing. It's a way of giving love to people. I shake my head. Uh, Craig Knox is disappointed. <laughs> he wants it back. Hey, Craig. Oh, Craig. I understand you're disappointed, but you're carrying a giant barrel that could blow all of us up, so... <laughs> Uh, Two, in fact. <laughs> Xander's, Xander's smart. Xander's very smart. You think good. <laughs> you guys, you guys are, are starting to file into the rowboat, and they are starting to row. You guys are pushing off of this underdock. And you yeah. start to move. After a short time in the distance, you think you start to smell s smoke. You come around a corner, and then you start to see the flames of something and a lot of dark smoke coming from it. You pull out from one of the parts of the underdock because you have to cross part of the bay. First off, there is no sun. It is dark out here. There is something covering the sun. The sky is black with a thick, heavy mist. In the distance, you see two large boats, ships actually, They've crashed into each other and they are on fire. You don't see any people in that fire. You just see these large ships completely on fire and beginning to sink. The two Orin pirate pirates avoid that and give it a wide berth. You guys enter the underdocks again and through the slats of the, the overhanging wood, you see mist, and the mist is almost like an ooze in these places as it drips slowly through the wood. In one place up ahead, you notice that the pirates are facing you guys, and they're oaring with their backs to the front. They don't see this ooze that they're moving towards, dripping through the slats, which are which is about eight feet above you. It's slowly dripping, and they're they're headed towards it because they don't see it. You guys do. Stop them. No. <laughs> Darn. They, one starts doing this, and the other one starts to do the, the opposite, and you guys avoid <laughs> that. You notice that it goes, and it reaches, but you guys are well away from it. And it even starts to form what looks like finger-like tendrils. And then it recedes when, it's, when you guys are too far out of reach. Mm. All right, you know what? I owe you for that one. I didn't see that. So I owe you. Thank you. They continue on. <laughs> a little while later. Now, by the way, you guys have been in this boat long enough to receive a short rest if you need it. So if you require a short rest, you have a short rest. If you are losing anything, if you miss anything, you can replenish it now. Did anyone take any damage in our awesome dealing with that bar fight? No, I believe not. I believe we're all hunky-dory. <laughs> While we are rowing out, I'm going to do as a ritual, find familiar, and I will bring us a hawk. Nice. You we'll take a solid 10, 15 minutes to do your ritual. At the end of the ritual, you don't know. You're looking up, waiting for the hawk to come, but you notice that there's nothing but black mist in the sky. It is a very heavy lid, and you don't know how that is going to affect your call. Mm. But then, mm. then you think you start to understand. You see movement in the water ahead of you. Yeah. A lot of movement. All of you roll perception checks. Uh, <clears throat> ooh. Oh, are you kidding right now? Four. Sixteen. 
17. Craig Knox reflexively, because he's a warrior, he reflexively stands up and points. This causes the boat to go Everybody roll dexterity checks. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> I have a um, minus one in dexterity. <laughs> seven. 11. 19. 19. You're good. As long as it's not a five or less, you you, you lurch, but nothing, <laughs> nothing major happens. But you look to see, first. You look at him like really, and he's like. Ooh. But then you look to see where he's pointing. There are rats in the water, and they are swimming towards you. It is not ten. It is not fifty. It is not a hundred. There are thousands of rats in the water and they are coming towards you. Now they are spread out. They are not zeroing in on you. They are just swimming towards you. They, as soon as they get to the front of the the rowboat, some of them, you can hear them go thump, and you can try to hear them skittering up. Some of them come up the oars, but what you notice as you get ready to, to yeah. swat them off and get rid of them, as you notice that they're, they're, they're getting on board, they're, they realize they face forward. That's the wrong direction. They turn towards the back of the boat and they start running down the edge of the wood, down the boat and jump off the back of the boat. They don't want <laughs> any part of where you guys are going. They're swimming in the opposite direction. You're headed <laughs> into them. Hooray. Do Only <laughs> heroes this way. <laughs> do, do, do you wish to continue? Uh, to mess with them at all, or just let them go? No, 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 Continue. No, no, no. Very good. Mm -hmm. Not long after that, you start to see the slaughter docks. Up ahead is where you are going, and before we get there, we're going to take a short break, five-minute break, and we will be right back. Yay! I feel good. Don't shut off your computer. Your your. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's looking.
Welcome back to Founders and Legends 3. Uh, we have a winner of the uh, the first, first contest. That winner won a one-year Super Siren subscription, and that winner's name is Chaotic Clooney. It is one word, Chaotic Clooney. Congratulations on your one-year subscription. Ben, would you tell us what that subscription is about? Yeah, uh, Super Siren subscription gets you access to absolutely everything in Sirenscape, including the online player, which lets you run games remotely with your friends so we can all stay safe. Uh, when you're a subscriber, everything new we release, uh, it's like you bought it and it adds to your permanent library forever. And um, yeah, you can use the online player to create your own sounds, to pull in some of your own music from computer games or music you composed, to do some voice acting yourself, mix it all together, share it with the community, just the whole of everything. So yeah, yeah, that's that's really awesome. I hope you enjoy that. Congratulations, Kiara Clooney. We yes. have another giveaway. Uh, this time, it is a $50 gift card from Hero Forged. Enter Hero Forge, one word, Hero Forge into the chat to be entered to win. Only one entry, more than one will get you disqualified, but you will be able to design your own custom minis. And you can do that today at www.heroforge.com. But a $50 gift card from Hero Forge. Throw in Hero Forge, one word, right now into chat. All right, let's get back, back to Dark Tide. <clears throat> you guys are in the skip. You've just passed thousands of rats who are getting away from the exact place you guys are going to. As the skip <laughs> slides, forward through the dark calm waters of slaughter docks. You begin to understand why the rats are leading. Here, the black mist is palpable. It permeates everything and clings heavily to the boats and to the buildings. Occasionally, you catch some unholy movement in the black mist itself. You feel as if this dark fog has a life of its own, as does what's inside of it. All of you, please give me perception checks Raise your hand if you get it more than a 20. Eleven. 24. 20 or above 20? Above 20 or 20 or above? 21. It is Turaco. It looks up. Xander, Pragnox, you realize that he's looking at something and you follow his gaze because he's got amazing eyes first what you notice is a wounded hawk is making its way towards the boat it has fought through the mist and it is missing a good deal of feathers but it comes to xander because he has called it some time ago it almost falls into the boat falling onto your arm and limps towards you but it shakes itself off and looks at you ready to do your bi your bidding, Xander. But Chiraco was not looking at that. So you guys look to see where he was looking. Visible in the distance on top of the buildings, you see something that is, no light does anything to it. You see a silhouette of something that looks like a man. On either side of this thing are two things that look like maybe dogs, not dogs, hyenas, but they reflect no light either. In fact, they absorb light. These three things are on top of a building looking, searching, hunting, constantly searching. <laughs> Not everyone sees this thing. Not yet. You guys want to alert the others? Tell. Cover the, shh, don't let that see us. Yes, cover the light. Cover the light. Yes. Hexel and Katamaran slam their hoods down on their lantern and squint to see the thing. Hexel. Shit. He grabs something off of his belt, it's a slingshot. He loads it, and he pulls, pulls, No, 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 Stop it. If they, have, if they haven't seen us, don't, don't attract their attention. I'm not! Trust don't me. Don't distract them. He's going to shoot it to the side so they look that way. 
Oh, oh, okay. That's why birds are not <laughs> I'm not stupid. <laughs> he shoots off to the left and the rock goes silently, silently over the building and clack, tack, tack. This thing slides away. As does the two hounds on either side of it. They jump off the edge of the building and disappear into the black mist on the other side of where you guys are currently headed. The pirates take a breath and then continue to row. It's at this moment that Texel looks over at Hina. Small. And he continues to roll. <laughs> I'm impressed. He looks <laughs> over at the cameraman. She's impressed. Shut up. They start to roll. Visible at the top of the salvage docks is the top sail of the flag known as the Phantom Isle. The jagged hook pirates allow the skiff to slide up to the rocks. Colonel Moran reaches out to keep the skiff from bumping into the rock and silently brings the skiff to a halt. They both motion for you guys to go. It's time to disembark. Good luck. This is it. Up out with the barrel. Yeah, we <laughs> clamber out some of the boat and try and. Is it pitch black if we don't have any lights at all, or is there a little bit of light? It's daytime. It's just dark. Okay, pitch black, or is there enough light to? It's to dim. Look? It's just dim. Yeah. There's enough okay, light. To okay, see. okay. So we keep out. We keep our. Yeah, keep keep your light. Keep keep your light um shuttered, you know, and unless we okay. really need it, yes. Come on. And I should reach out and help help anyone out of the boat who needs a hand. Oh, oh I, I, I help you, Hina. Yes. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Hina's got Disguise. no camera. He turns back and comes face to face with Cece. <laughs> Can I help you? <laughs> I don't need your help. I know how to get a boat. <laughs> what? Oh, we're supposed to whisper. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. All right. So, so will we take these barrels to to, to the to that ship. Where, where, where is it? Can we see the ship that we're supposed to be taking the barrels to? It's up here. At the top of the slaughter docks on hooks on the other side of these buildings. It's about two football fields away. You're gonna have to cross some distance to get to this place. But once you're there, you'll be going all the way up the slaughter docks. That's where they, they haul the boat out of the water and they pull it apart. It is up there on hooks. You can see it, at least the top half of it. You're, you're behind some buildings, so you're gonna have to get there. Now, to your left is, is water because this is where the dock stops. So there's okay. kind of a marina, there's some boats on that side, but it's all icky with black mist. To your right, in the middle, there is the docks themselves. Now that you've gotten up on the rocks and you're about to climb up onto the dock, but you haven't yet, up on the docks, there are bodies all over the place up here. They're just, there's dead, dead everywhere. Body. They're just dead people laying on, the, they, they were in mid-run when something happened to them. So their bodies litter the ground. Uh, and to the right are the buildings. In the I would like to check the bodies just to see if there's anyone alive who, could, who I could, you know. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. You can do that. I will tell you this though. As you crawl up on top of the docks, you see the dead bodies. You're going to go up there. But about three feet above the bodies is where the <laughs> mist is. And it's about <laughs> eight, eight feet of mist. And then above the mist, it's it's good for about another 20 feet, and then there's another ceiling of mist up there. It's starting to spread out, but right now the mist is heavy and it hangs over 
you get about three feet, so you'd have to crawl unless you want to walk through the mist. But it just doesn't look yeah, like we crawl. Feet. I will tell you this though: there is a pole and a long wire that goes to the top of a building. So, if you want to go down this dock without touching the mist, you can either a crawl next to the dead bodies, or b climb this pole and make your way across the wire, and then go at least part of the way on top of the building, <laughs> just above the mist. I have a question. I say we go up. Um, I have a second level evocation. It's called Warding Wind. It allows me to hedge out fog. I don't know if it'll work if this is magic fog, though. Mm. So, I mean, I, I mean, perhaps it can work. Would you Let's like see. to try that? That is not a bad idea. There is wisdom in it. Oh, yes. OK. So I have to cast a level three spell slot for it, though. Okay. How long does this last? It lasts for, it takes concentration for up to 10 minutes. It's mm, a good okay. amount. That maybe, very... that, maybe it'll work. Yeah, no, that is but very a strong nice. wind that blows around me in a 10 foot radius and it moves with us, remaining centered on me, but it, it hedges out fog <laughs> and mist yes. and all that stuff. If that works, fantastic. Yeah. I'm just curious. Yeah. Like, I'm thinking, how am I going to carry two? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Would you like to be the teeth? Okay, yes. What does it look like? What do you say? What do you do to call the warding wind? Oh, that's right. Out? So he and I, so we get up to the uh, area where the dead bodies are. And Tina's like, don't worry, I can take care of this. At least I can try. This spell was actually handed to me by Sujata when she passed away. And I'm going to use it. Okay. And she looks up and she says, Donnerschlag. And she blows through her hands. And this wind just comes up out of the ground. And it's like blue and silver. And it starts swirling around her. And the black mist starts dissipating outwards, almost like a tunnel. And you guys, we can see much clearer, but on the outsides of it, it's still like black where the mist is. So, but it only lasts 10 minutes. We have to hurry up, you guys. Pick it up, let's go. Yes. Let's go. <laughs> Perhaps you're not all darkness, lady. Well done. Yes, just one true God is with you in power. <laughs> and with that, the black mist <laughs> is pushed back against its will. You can tell that it wants to go around and it starts to go around slowly, very much against nature, but it does not approach Hina. Hina knows the secrets of the element and of the wind, and with those secrets, she has for now forbidden the black mist to approach. Awesome. We follow Hina and we stay close to her. <laughs> I'm going to use her wind and just kind of float above her, like riding on the wind currents. <laughs> Very nice, very nice, and it is done. You guys begin nice. to walk against the black mist and Excellent. through it. Now, two things are revealed when the black mist is pushed back. One, the dead bodies are quite clear. They are drained. They also have a look of terror on their face. Yeah. And you see as the black mist is pushed away from them, that the black mist is holding on to them and is forced to let go in tendrils and it is pushed away, at least from the black the, the, the bodies that you are near. Yeah. Second, so there's no one I can stabilize or anything like that. They are well, well dead. Second I think we found a harrowing. <laughs> <laughs> Second, some of the things in the black mist are heavier than the mist. You oh, push the black mist away, and for just a moment, you see the things in the mist. <laughs> How much am I getting paid for this? <laughs> <laughs> I think the general thing was a lot, but maybe not enough. Twenty <laughs> kraken. <laughs> Yeah. Woo. A lot of money. Um, you see them get pushed back with the mist. For a moment, the mist pulls back, and then they are forced back as well. 
Okay. Your way is currently clear, and you take advantage of it. In the mm. distance, as you move forward, you guys hear a chain. It sounds like it's going katang, 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 tang. Just the chain against it's bumping against something. But you guys are moving towards that as yeah. as the mist is forced away from you. What would you guys like to do as you move down the docks? Okay. You're stepping over lots of dead bodies. I think there's a, all we can do is just approach this thing. There's no one spell. Anyone have any any, any spells or blessings? Uh, just ready to go. Last, but it only lasts a time. And it's yes, more for combat. Yes. Okay, but be re be ready. Be ready to to launch into combat and to cast that spell to keep us all safe. I have my fire and light and holy power of the one true God on our side. I'm sure everything will be completely fine. <laughs> Ka -tang. Ka -tang. <laughs> so you will all move towards this sound as a group out in yes. the open, is that correct? Uh, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> that dungeon master question. <laughs> yeah. Um, we have yes. to keep Tobias forward. doesn't know anything yeah. about yeah. cover. Yeah, Very together. Good. You are wise. <laughs> <laughs> You move forward. Give me perception checks. Ka Tang. Tang. Eighteen. No, it's ten. Twenty-three. Eight. Also an eight. Uh, need a dice jail. Four. <laughs> Did I hear a twenty-three? Yes, uh, I had a twenty-three. Eight. Very good. Eagle eyes. Sirocco, you. Your sharp bird eyes catch movement in the darkness. Do you want to notify the party? It is quite a ways up because 23 is a good amount of space. You've seen it well before everyone else. Yes. Look, look, something moves up ahead. Do you guys wish to take cover or stand and freeze? <laughs> I think we should take cover. <laughs> ah. Hide. Let's hide behind the barrels. We have to follow Hina either way because she has the wind thing. What's she do? What does she do? <laughs> you have no problem pressing yourself up against the building, against the lip of a building near a door jam. The mist is forced away from this place, so you guys are safe for now. Uh huh. While that <laughs> thing, it is a broken sign on a chain, with a chain with a piece of wood, and the wood is going. Ping, 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 ping. And Sirocco takes some of your faces oh, and not, you, you're looking at the chain, but he does this. <laughs> <laughs> and there is mist and shadows about 15 feet away from it. <clears throat> Out of the mist and shadows, you see it. It steps out and it looks at the chain. <laughs> it moves slowly towards the chain, which is profile to you guys. It's nowhere near you. Uh, You're about 40 uh -huh, feet away uh -huh. from it. Uh -huh. It walks up to the chain and it's a little higher than he is, but he reaches up and he touches the chain. When he touches it, it loses all momentum. Thing. All he does is touch it and all of its momentum, all of its life in the natural world is gone. <laughs> and he... Hi. <laughs> I think hiding is a good... No light touches this thing. The only light that it emits is that, that horrible thing from its eyes. A cold light. If this thing touches you and does the same thing, it, it looks down one side of the dock, down the other side. What do you want to do? We should distract it or something. <laughs> it moves on. Um, 
minor illusion, that kind of thing? Anyone got that, Xander? I do. I'm going to, I'm actually going to use the, I think I can use the hawk. Yes. Because yes. this thing might be too smart for a minor illusion. So I'm going to have the hawk take flight. Okay. And go low across the water. And then as he approaches, he's going to swoop and pull away, drawing his attention opposite it from our direction. Very well. Give me an arc no check. Give me an oh, go ahead. Goodbye, goodbye, Hawk. I loved you so. <laughs> uh, TJ, what did I need to roll? An arcana check, please. Arcana. It is a 12. Okay. It's a simple idea. You will fly by and be gone. And it does. It starts to turn towards you because the flapping of the hawk, the takeoff, is the noisiest part. So it starts to look in your direction, but the only movement it sees is the hawk. And it watches the hawk. It watches the hawk. The hawk actually swoops somewhat near it. And as it passes, he barely hesitates. He watches. And as the hawk passes, he starts to run with the hawk at the speed that the hawk flies. It runs and it runs down the dock and out of your view. Go, Chase go, 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 everyone. Hawk. Do you want to call Ooh. the hawk back? No. It is gone. <laughs> <laughs> it is gone. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> you another one. That's right. <laughs> Hope it, it, it could survive, you know, you never know. <laughs> you know, hopes and prayers. <laughs> oh. <laughs> the worst part is with that <laughs> level of speed and that level of intensity of running, it didn't make a single sound, not a single foot left. It is gone and out of your way. You may continue if you wish. Five, five minutes go, go, of pass go, go, go. on your wording wheel. Let's go. How about we uh, move a little faster? It is done. Yes. You move forward. You guys are closer, and you see a flag flop around limply in the wind. It looks, it looks familiar. It's the Mary Bucket. That's the ship that you're supposed to, in a week's time, be on. Oh. Its nose is sticking out of the water, but the back <laughs> half of the boat is under water. But you do see the first mate. He's standing there at the prow of the ship <laughs> with his clipboard in his hand, <laughs> looking out to sea. Uh, does he look dead or undead or petrified or? Uh, you may roll the perception check because you're curious <laughs> to take a step closer to the Mary Bucket. Yes. Mm. Fragnox does oh, not take man. that step. <laughs> I, got no, I got another, uh, oh, an eight. Yeah, I'm just rolling. This this die, listen, you, you're going to go over there and have <laughs> one who's a friendly die because it's nice. Yeah. <laughs> With an eight, you can see his back clearly, and he seems to be his leg is up on something. So, I guess he looks okay. He looks like he's looking out at sea. Oh, there's, there's the first mate. It's a strange way to be standing. Uh, uh, um, should we ask him what he's he seeing? I'll take a look at him, see if he looks normal. <laughs> Any perception check? <laughs> I'm sort of uh, walking forward to go and greet him. Very good. It's going to be uh, twenty-two. If normal is includes his foot up on top of the rest of the crew, which is all dead under his foot, <laughs> then yes, he is normal. Someone stop me! Does he normally stand stand on the on? The, shh, hey, Bias, come back! What? Hmm? What? Oh, what? Does he does he normally stand on top of the dead crew? Oh, you're right. Oh, oh. 
I do my holy symbol, whatever that is, pulling my ears or something, probably. Very good. He's I, off in the distance. He's about 75 feet away. His do we have to go on. past him? No, 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 no. Yeah, That's okay. the dock over there. You'd have to go off the dock to get to him. Okay. 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 Just, just avoid, <laughs> avoid, avoid him, yes. Perhaps we need to look for different work in the future shortly. <laughs> you know? The one true God closes one door, he opens another door, <laughs> sinks the boat, you know, <laughs> his mysterious ways. <laughs> Very good. You guys move on. Okay. Your wind dies down, and then you find yourself at the bottom of the salvage docks. You start to climb the long wooden path. Here you have to step over the dead. Here, the, the black mist isn't thick. It is going out from here, but it's not on here. Not yet. You make your way up, up, up. You can see all around you is black mist, and it's pouring out of something that is above you. It is reaching okay. towards Bilgewater proper in that direction. But you go to the top, 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 and you make it to the top of the salvage docks. Up here, on the other side of the building, you can see the Phantom Mire in all of its glory. It's horrible glory. It is swathed in a sickly green energy, which makes the entire ship appear whole. Although it's been here in the salvage dock for at least a week, it has to be half pulled apart. But it's whole. Its sails are full. Its flag billows powerfully in the wind. And it has the black mist pouring out of it down below into Bilgewater Bay. It is well on the other side of the warehouses. What would you like to do? Investigate. Yeah. Move yeah. Closer? Yeah, we have to get closer <laughs> here. We have to see where the black stuff is coming out of and where can we get who, can, is there a place we can get on the ship where there isn't the black smoke <clears throat> barrels and then stick a torch in it or something? Very good. Hmm. You guys move forward. Roll perception checks, please. Now, I have a nice... Oh! oh. My green, green die is behaving. <laughs> yes. I have I have a mace of warning, which means that we can't be surprised... 23. And, um, yeah. Four. <laughs> Who has the 23? 21. Sirocco. Nice. 23. Nice. 21. Very good. You guys find a path. You move away from the mist. You actually go through part of the warehouse. And in the distance, you see the main deck of the Phantom Isle. On the main deck, in the far distance, there is something, but you don't have a clear vision of it. You would have to move to a different part of the warehouse to hopefully see it. Now, if you really want to, this would mean exposing yourself to the deck, though. You would you go straight up this dock, and you could get to the Phantom Iron. Or you could go through the warehouse and kind of go around to get a different view before you walk out in the open to it. It's up to you. Probably better to take walk around, not go mm. straight in. Hey, why don't I make myself invisible and I'll do a little recon and come back. Can you make me invisible? <laughs> I can make you invisible. That would even be better. Because I'm wearing armor that might not be so silent. Mm -hmm. If you can make me invisible, I can go fast. You can go fast. All right, buddy. I'm casting invisibility on you. Good luck. <laughs> Whoa. The magic takes hold, and you leave the world of the visible. Uh, I'm going to fly <laughs> as quietly as possible, as fast as possible, out to see what I can see and come back. Um, if I have to, I can use... Um, you can use the monk power to use a bonus for another movement, so I can get three movements, which will give me a total movement distance of 210 feet. Ooh. You tear across the sky. You see a full 
ship, fully formed, and off of its cannon bays, pour black mist. Pours it down into the bay below. Its sails are full, its flags are taut, and on the deck, <laughs> looking out towards Bilgewater Bay. So down is, the dock? Is, huh? So it's looking down the dock? No, it is looking the exact opposite direction. Gotcha. In the exact opposite direction, looking out at the city beyond, is probably its captain or its commander. But that person, and you catch a glimpse of it, and give me a wisdom saving throw as you, you take this glimpse. That's never a good question. <laughs> uh, dirty 20. You have excellent eyesight. You catch a glimpse as you tear around and you don't want to stay there for That dirty 20 steals your guts because what you see is, for just a moment, probably one of the most terrifying things you've seen. This commander has power. This commander commands the black mist. This commander is not <sighs> Oh. Okay. And How far he, away are we from him? Get around <laughs> and get back to your friends. Okay. He never even looks up. Yeah. I, uh, I fly silently and invisibly over them. <laughs> <laughs> and out of out of the nothingness, I say, he's looking towards the the town from the from the deck. He's not looking towards the dock. All right. Oh, okay. I guess we got a chance then. So th there's a direction right there. we can go right safely. Yeah. So I think I know the way we can get there. Sort of go rock every now and then and guide us. I could just do mm -hmm. this to, to break the invisibility. Ah, okay. <laughs> Give a, a quick punch to Brother Tobias. <laughs> <laughs> do you wish to break sorry, it now? Sorry, sorry. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. <laughs> nice. You are back. <laughs> what would you guys like to do? Reach down the dock. Yeah, it's from, from behind. Yeah, so we can get to. So from the dock, we would be able to. Are there holes in the ship we could put the bomb things into, or? It is a full ship. Okay, there are so no actually, so... obvious holes. Okay. So so we so so we need to get these things into the bottom of the ship, presumably, or just beneath it, and and, and, and light. Did anyone bring a? <laughs> a, a, a cord thing that makes things not blow up immediately <laughs> I didn't think what they're called. although maybe we could light it from a distance yes with a fire spell yes uh, so, an idea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I we need to bring these barrels maybe not under the deck but on the exterior near the water line and blow mm -hmm. a hole near the yes, water yes, yes. capsize the yes, ship yes so if I can't levitate on the barrels I can do up to 500 pounds worth of powder that I can levitate uh -huh. down to the base of the water, and then I can cast Create Bonfire. Keep I can, this in I can, mind, I can, you guys I can are way rain. above the water line. Remember, you went all the way up. So this ship is on hooks. It's out of the water. Well above. So it hooks down mm. and then cranes pull Got the ship. So, ah, so we just, we just it's literally in the hooks as well. So, so do, 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 uh, do the hooks look like they could be damaged by a scorching ray or something to make it drop the boat They're into heavy. the water? They as hold as... ships. They hold an entire ship. I have a question so for Sirocco. Sirocco, did it look like it was a, a humanoid yeah. thing that you that you saw with the glowing eyes? Yeah, like man shape. All right, I'd like to attempt charm person because i can use it on humanoids as long as i'm 30 feet away from it i just don't know if it'll see me if i'm 30 feet away from it it's mm -hmm. farther away i think Isn't and it? you have to get his attention yeah yes it could be dangerous I, I think we just let's just focus on the mission and blow this ship up and okay. follow the captain had much more wisdom than we have in dealing with this so let's just do it oh, 
So, so the hooks, okay. we have four hooks holding the boat and we have four barrels. Could we put the, a barrel at each hook? In there? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. That's a good idea. But how do we get up to the hooks? Is, is, there, a, is there some sort of scaffolding we can climb? Or oh, levitate's a good idea too. You could mm. climb the scaffolding. Okay. Siri, Sissy, are you good at climbing? So, uh, <clears throat> I'll put the a... Weak, the weak, by the way, the weakest points are where the hook connects to the ship itself. Yes, yes, Up yes. there yes, is really big, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so oh, oh, a barrel on each hook. He means where the uh, the hook in a boat, not the top. Yes, yeah. yes, 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 mm. yes. Okay, and then we and then we set them off with scorching rays or fire magic or whatever we whatever we need to do from a distance. That sounds excellent idea. So so who's good at climbing? Who who's who's agile? Not me, that's for sure. Yes, and we can levitate one of them at least. Yes. I'm small and I'm good at climbing. Also <laughs> everything. Excellent. Here, you take you take this barrel. It's a little heavy, but you look strong. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just fly mine up. Yep, yep. Okay, so the plan is we've got uh, Soroku's going to fly one barrel up in his claws. Cece's going to climb up with one. Uh, Xander's going to levitate one, and uh, Cragdox can just sort of just walk straight up because he's super strong. <laughs> and then Uncertain. who has fire? I, we- I have fire magic. Good brother, I'm uncertain yes. if our plan will work. If we just drop the ship into the water, yes, may not destroy the ship. Okay. So do we no. need to physically destroy the ship with the powder? Do we need to blow it apart and do a million pieces? Mm-hmm. What or if, does what if, just... What if we put I the think... barrels in the hooks? Wouldn't it blow the holes in the ship? Yes, that's true. Um, does it look like if an explosion went off at the hook, it would compromise the flotation abilities of the vessel? That's what we need to determine. Uh, didn't Captain Gang Plank say pull out the heart? Yes, drop the heart into the into the water, I think, was the idea. Oh, no, Some, we, have to, we have to go in the ship to get the heart first. Yeah. You know what? My team yeah. will remember exactly what he said as yes, that what, is something... <laughs> That I have. Oh, Dungeon Master, don't do any of this. Remember <laughs> what the plan the is. Dungeon. Oh. <laughs> okay, Xanders, through your you you are extraordinarily smart. I'm not even going to make you roll it. <laughs> your your keen mind is super super tight on exactly what was said. You replay the scene again. Uh, speaking metaphorically, uh, no doubt it was a metaphor to tear the heart out. Uh, okay. What that means is destroy the ship. Oh. And, and the exact words are to sink it to the bottom of Bilgewater Bay. Don't okay. drop into the water, sink it. Drop. Okay. And, and and is it clear that blowing the hooks wouldn't necessarily compromise the ability of the boat to sink? So we also Not need to, to, this is a as, full as, ship. Yeah, as you say, Craig Knox, we need to also break a hole in the in the water thing. Yeah. Does anyone have so, wood wood like what about our witch? Hina, do you have like um growth or deform wood or anything like that? Or the the bard. I don't. I have an Do idea. I... Yes, 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 Sissy, yes. Why don't <laughs> we just go and talk to him and use diplomacy? Because everyone goes cold and stiff when that yeah. happens, and, <laughs> and 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 they all go dead, and and. We can't make them back alive again. And Who's so afraid of the big you death? Uh, that's very uh, nice, me. but I am the strongest, the strongest warrior that has ever existed in the last a thousand years. The strongest <laughs> warrior, and I even have a, a medal that somewhere that says that I am the, <laughs> the most diplomatic and the strongest warrior in the world, so I could go, and even if he tried to attack me, I could go ee, 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 ee. That's true, <laughs> yes, but sometimes when we're younger, we have a false sense of invulnerability, and perhaps that's what's coming into play right now, Cece. <laughs> You're invulnerability. <laughs> the sky gets darker. <laughs> right, right. Uh, someone, someone, someone talk down, Cece, while we work out how uh, to put a hole in the bottom of the You look up, you see the sky getting darker, that's a sign from the good god of this territory that that's a bad idea. <laughs> yes, yes. Have a crossbow. Let Have us a crossbow. A, 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 
crossbow can help. Let us go on this ship, and why don't we uh, put the fire powder uh, down into the, the hull, mm. yep. and we will um, use our uh, magic or whatever we need to do to, to crack the hooks, and we can drop the ship in after we blow a hole in it. Yes, so yes. At the bottom. Yes, I think that sounds like an excellent Come on, idea. The, trust your guts. I was going to say that. And then you get to stab with your, your dagger um, at the hooks, and you can yes. punch a hole through any hook you want. Yes. Fine. That would be a, that would be a very brave Perfect. thing to do. Yes. I get... Thanks. Okay. I'll buy, I'll buy you dinner next time. Thanks. Mm. Steak. Oh, I didn't say that. Okay. <laughs> All right, so let's get... Should we get everything onto the ship? Now? That, that's yeah, let's do it. Let's let's get a couple of the... Yeah, you know, I'll carry a couple of kegs. I'll try to move quietly up that gangplank. You be in... Me a... You're the first one, or you're the only one? Uh, I uh, think I can... What? I mean, you guys can cover me with your weapons, and I'll just try to creep on by myself and find a, a hatch. I mean, I'll wave you up or something. I'm going to fly above his head. Oh, a that's good. Way, a little ways up, so that I'm not in direct line of sight. You can only go about 20 feet high above that in the mist. mist. Okay, that's, I'll go that high. <clears throat> and I assume you're staying behind the vision of that commander? Yeah. And it's saying his his blind sight in the back. Very good. Uh, give me two stealth rolls uh, with a stealth roll with advantage because you were behind him. Uh, and Luke, same please, but you're walking up. All right, so 23. 23. And uh oh. And <laughs> 13. 23 is fine. That's totally, that's totally fine. I only need the advantage one. Um, oh. Mm, 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 and mm. You, you're carrying currently two casks. Yeah. Very good. You walk up this long path with rope on either side. It creaks underneath you because it is soft, which is a little unnerving, uh, unless you're a normal salvage dock worker. But you walk over the wood and you can hear the creak of the boat, this ancient boat ahead of you. All right. Is there a hatch? Is there a hatchway that I can see on, on the deck close to me? You get to the end of the dock, and you may step onto the boat, which has green energy intertwined with the wood. Would you like to step onto it? <laughs> green is good. I'm green. I'm not <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so, step where I see real wood versus the green ah, wood. Ah, nice, that. nice. And you do. Cragnock, think the thing. Good, the Cragnock. You step onto the boat and you see him clearly. He is here. Ooh. Well, I'm not going to mess with him. <laughs> if he I don't is about. <laughs> He's about 10 feet away. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. He's about 80 feet away. My bad. Oh. Ten feet. I'm sorry. About 80 <laughs> feet away. <laughs> <laughs> I counted ten things. Oh. Right, right. I'm trying to figure out where you're at. He's about 80 feet away on the edge of okay. the starboard side, looking out. To your, you're kind of in the middle. So to your left is a shack that probably has stairs down. Also to your right is a shack that has kind of stairs down to the underbelly of the ship. At the far end of the ship, on that side to your right, are stairs up that go to, what do you call the end of a ship? The stern. The stern of the ship, and then the bow is that way with yeah. stairs up on the other side. Right. Where would you like to go? Uh, so I think to the left you said was the stern, so. The stern, the bow is to the left. The stern is to the right. And then I'll, and you said there were stairs down towards the stern. In both directions, there's stairs down. I'm, I'm going to head to the back of the ship because I just think that sounds What'd you do? Give me another stealth check. 
Is he is he just carrying two barrels? Is he? And we're going to take the other ones later. Yep. No, I'm carrying two barrels. Two. Fifteen. Uh, are you flying them? That's right. Yes, yes, yes. I remember. Are your arms separate from your wing? They are. Yeah. Very, very good. <laughs> I'm hexapedal. Very good. You go down the stairs. What was your stealth loop? One five. Fifteen. <laughs> you step carefully. <laughs> you step carefully, and you disappear into the stairwell. Woo, woo. And Sirocco, you're in the air. You have now. This is clumsy for you. You have two barrels, one under each arm. It's a little clumsy, but you are doing it. What do you want to do with those? If you want, I can carry one barrel in my arms and one barrel in my feet, since they can grasp things. Sure. It's going to make landing horrible, though. Oh, no. Okay. Then I'll just do it with the arms. <laughs> Very good. What do you want to do? Um, how close is he to the other staircase that goes down the other end of the ship? It would just, it's in the, 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 the plank is in the middle, so you can go okay. to the left if you want. Yeah, I want to go, to go down the other one without being seen by the guy up front. You'll have to land, so give me a separate stealth check upon landing. Actually, Scrocco, you should still be invisible because... Um, no, I broke that. You broke oh, it. You yeah. punched me because I was obnoxious. Oh. <laughs> it was only going to last for like 10 rounds. Um, I, I got a total of uh, 19 on my uh, stealth. So I, I, I have flaming sphere. So once this is all set up, I can just dump that inside the vessel and roll it round and around until everything's catching on fire. You set down, Sirocco. You wait for a moment. No body language change from the commander. So you may proceed downstairs if you wish. I will. The rest of you, you guys are down on the plank watching them go left and right. Is there anything that you want to do right now? Just watch carefully and be ready, I suppose. Yeah. As I said, I'm, I'm ready to cast Flaming Sphere just to dump it into the sort of, if we cast it inside the boat through one of the gun ports or something. Very good. Once well, they're clear. I'm, um... <laughs> <laughs> you guys... Just buff, yeah. The, does activating the staff make any noise? Yeah. Okay, I'm just going to have the staff activated so that it's all it's ready for battle so that the snake is with us very good uh i will tell you it is much heavier as a snake it is a lot heavier so transporting it suddenly becomes an issue are you okay with that uh it also has its own movement what, what is this movement um hold on let's see so we can uh, snake along. Feet, and it can swim at 30 feet. Okay. Well.
dip and swerve <laughs> and you zip by and they only watch okay good Ooh. they even shift good to know. Walk behind them but they're chained to each other and chained to the wall they cannot move all right well not knowing what's going on here and seeing all these guys the eyes kind of wigging me out so i'm gonna get these barrels up you know get one the one up against the, the back wall and the floor or whatever in the corner pry one open and uh pour some pour some out uh i know i have like uh a tinder box and i have rope <laughs> hemp rope might work so i think i'm gonna try to light my rope you know roll it in some of this stuff, light the rope and use my tinder box to light the rope and then run. Okay, so you're going to start that shrapple. Yep. You <laughs> are just getting to the bottom of the stairs on your side. Can I see the all the way to the other end of the boat and see what he's up to? No. No, there's yeah. stuff in between. You guys are on opposite ends and there's stuff in between. Um, <laughs> you look into the wall here. Uh, do you want to make your way down the left towards the front of the ship? Yes. Very good. You uh, give me two 20 sided. Just give them to me flat. 17. Natural 20. 17. <laughs> Natural 20. Roll a percentile. Hold on for six. Or 91. Two roll the natural twenty. Uh, Ooh, don't forget we have that bonus die. Whoever it was, was that you, Xander, who did that? Xander's got the advantage. Two dice. Mine's yeah. a thirteen. I rolled a thirteen. Yeah. I don't know. Of the natural twenty, I rolled thirteen. Um, on percentile dice, you walk. No down walk. Fly. This all you cannot fly you can't spread your, this is a galley and there's no space whatsoever um you in fact as you do that your natural inclination is to fly and you smack the door boom, yep and you know better than to look back because that was just bad you just quickly move forward because <laughs> why why look back how would you do that yeah <clears throat> because and this guy's having to walk on the kind of the non green bits is that right which are actually there that is correct. Okay. Okay. But you do hear the door creak open behind you after you walk past it about eight <laughs> feet. That's fine. <laughs> totally fine, totally fine, totally fine. There is a door open behind you. Do you want to do anything? Uh, no, I'll quickly proceed to go to <laughs> the floor of the ship to set, <laughs> set the barrels. <laughs> That can't be very good. <laughs> <laughs> speed, speed record of the nonchalant walk. <laughs> uh, for those of you on the top, for some reason, for some odd reason, that figure on the deck turns its head to the left. Okay. Do we want to distract it now? CC, maybe now is the time to shoot him. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> or something. I've got a distraction ready to go. Yay! <laughs> you are currently 40 feet away from the edge of the ship itself. So what would you like to yeah. do? 40 feet. Mm -hmm. um, I would and actually put you like... about uh, 120 feet away from the figure. Yeah. Just... yeah. <sighs> cool. I need to get closer. Uh, okay, I just will not cast a spell. I will just be obnoxious. <coughs> Hello, creepy captain. Please don't kill us dead. Don't take all the blood and breath from our heads. There must be some type of arrangement, you see. A thing we can agree that's not all murder. -y. <laughs> Huzzah! Ew. Can we make a deal? <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
That's oh boy. Just awful. <laughs> that dungeon master went scary. Oh, you know. Come to see the might of Letros. You've come to see the might of non Cece. You should have left well enough alone. And with so that, says you. Armor starts <laughs> to rise up through the decks and clad him. <laughs> A shield climbs to his arm and something comes up and hands him a sword. Excellent. Oh, okay. And he takes... He got his attention. He <laughs> takes the sword, and it is only a half a blade, but when it gets into his hand, the ghostly green essence of what is left of the blade becomes apparent. It becomes a ghost sword, even though you can see only half of the metal. It'll only take half our hit points. Someone's compensating for something. <laughs> he looks at you very slowly after after that <laughs> half a sword will do the job and he starts to move towards you secure my ship it is at this moment that the chains drop away from the slaves. Uh, <laughs> you didn't know that was gonna happen. <laughs> you put the final barrel <laughs> You put the final barrel down and you start to notice that the entire back area of the ship lights <laughs> up. And you're like, where's all that light coming from? You turn around and mm. there are at least forty, maybe sixty slaves. Window, I'm, getting window, the tinder box out. I'm getting the tinder box out. I'm gonna have to spark it. <laughs> Just jump, Cragnox. I'll flaming spear. This Don't worry, that will light it. Bad situation. Under these nervous conditions, you have one single chance. Either an athletic check or a acrobatics check to, without your hand shaking, spark the light. <laughs> All right, here it goes. I will be we have... in athletics. It'll be a hard strike on that Tinder. And I scored a natural 20, which I'll oh! 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 My heart dropped Dang. because that guy has a poop symbol on one side. <laughs> oh, but I, I'm not wearing my glasses. I have to look carefully. It's just, oh. And 49 more dollars. So we are Dang. up to uh, two. Uh, 45, $245. Everybody wins. Nice. <laughs> Wait, 345. I'm sorry, 345. Yep. 345 this game. All right, excellent. All right. I will tell you, you, you do realize that you are there at the point of. I don't. There's no escape, right? There's no hole to jump through. Yeah. Is, isn't Nothing. there a green bit he can just jump straight through or anything? Not back here. They haven't gotten to this part of the ship. <laughs> All right. Well. Smash. Cragnock smash. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Let me check what is happening here. Uh, yeah. I, I, I think they're going to kill me otherwise. So, Roll. Give me an 8d6. You say? <laughs> you look glorious. Six. <laughs> 8d6. Oh, 8d6. 8d6. Well, there's a 6. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a good thing or a yeah, bad thing that it's a big number? <laughs> All right. Uh, 10. Uh, 28. 28. 28. And then the second barrel has 8d6. Oh, my gosh. All right. Uh, boom. Uh, that is 10 plus 13, so 23. 18 plus, is it? Uh, 23 and 28, I think, is what I had. So that would be 50, 51 for both barrels. 
that is what goes off direct and you cannot say it because you are causing the event the back of the ship explodes on the other hand you have taken out the, the dead things that are here but there's nothing even left of you to fall you are oh. splattered across the entire ceiling and back portion of the ship. <laughs> Just a fine green mist of, of Pregnox, but he died gloriously. That's I cast stabilized. <laughs> <laughs> For you on the top, the ship dropped, <laughs> and the back of the ship starts to smoke horribly. Uh, I think you have to get ready to. to I do. I have a. I have to jump out. I just don't know if that's going to mess with the graphics, though. For just don't don't turn off your video. Don't turn off your video. I think is the thing we do. Yeah, but just I walk have, away. I have to go into a Zoom to do another Zoom call. Oh no, no! <laughs> Sorry. Everyone, just ignore the blank space. That's right. I think everything rearranges on the on the stream. And for all I had to the be rest the of you, you are an initiative. Go ahead and give me your initiative now. Okay. Uh, yes, yeah, so I'm going to roll initiative. I will start with Shirako. What is yours? My initiative is a 19. Thank you. Hina? And what is your initiative, Hina? Um, oh, shoot. Wait. And you said and investigation? I'm sorry. You said investigation? Uh, uh, oh, oh, no. Do you say eight? Nine. Nine for Hina, and what is the presenter? Eleven. Eleven, non CC? Ten. Ten. Brother Tobias? Eighteen. Eighteen. So Sirocco has, has one, one turn to go before I blow up the ship. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Sirocco. Get out of there! Get out of there, Sirocco! What do you want to do? Should I get the barrels down before, or do I have to set them down now? You are setting them down right now. If you want to make that your action, you can prepare them, set them down, and prepare them. Yep. I'll have my action to set them down, prepare them, and then I'll take a move action to head towards uh, the way I came in. Okay. Um, if done. I have uh, the option, I'll use a bonus action to move again to get the hell out of the ship. Okay. You make it to the top of the stairs because you are double hustling, and you have that monk movement. No problem. Brother Tobias. I'm going to dump a flaming sphere into the ship and roll it towards where Sirocco was setting the barrels. Fortunately, you know exactly where that is, and the flames explode while Sirocco walks out. The flaming sphere explodes right in front of him. He hops over the top of it as you send it down that direction. <laughs> Excellent. May the light of God burn away the unholiness, etc., etc., etc. And it is so. <laughs> uh, Sirocco, you make it to the top. And all of a sudden there is a, a sudden massive flame in front of you. You step around it with absolutely no problem, but what you did not expect is the ghostly visage of the commander. And you, you feel him before you see him. His ghostly blade slices directly through your rib cage. Ow. <laughs> and it is horribly cold. First, eight points of damage. Oof. Then Easy. 12 points of damage as the cold starts to spread through your body. Oh. You will know. They will all know. Xander, you see Shirako get cut by the commander and the blade goes into his gut. What do you want to do? I am going to cast... Now, we... Um... So is he through the blade? Is he like, or is he able to get away after being attacked? The is blade is in him. He's like, he's holding on to, he's trying to keep the blade from going any deeper. 
Got it. The, the entire ship is rocking forward, and the back side of it is smoking. Part of the ship is gone in the back. Then I'm going to cast um, Flaming Spear. Whoa. Direct it at uh, our good captain. Very good. Tell me what that does. And so, uh, it's a 14. Um, thing that he has to do, uh, the t- creature will take 2d6 fire damage on a failed save, half as much on a successful one. Uh, and then what I can move it as a bonus. What did you say? DC 14 dex save. DC 14. Yeah. Thank you very much. Give me that damage. He does not see the giant ball of fire coming. <laughs> Distracted by my giant ball of fire. We have two balls of fire. Goodness gracious. Great balls of fire. Did he make the save? <laughs> he did not. He did not. So that would be 2d6. Do I roll that or you? You can roll it. All right. Rolling. Now, you're next. That is 10 points of damage. He burns and he looks back to see where that came from. He doesn't understand how that got behind him. And Cece, what would you like to do? At this point, is he now, am I closer to him or no? Uh, yes, he, he closed the distance to get to Shirako and you closed the distance to get to him. So, yes. I would like to run up. Okay, very good. I would like to aim towards here. Attack. Yes. Okay. And I have plus one with my magic dagger. Oh, bl- magic dagger. Very good. Magic dagger. Go ahead. Give me that attack. <laughs> That's a nat 20. No. Ooh. Nice. <gasps> I'm going to kill a bad guy. 22 on the percentile. Yeah, nice. Nice. Uh, give me that damage and double it, please. Let's see. Awesome. Telling me it's a ghost man bane blade. Sixteen points. The dagger starts to glow hot orange. And first the stab. He does not see you coming because he looks behind him at the fire and he's dealing with Shirako. All of a sudden, the blade goes up through his face and when the blade hits, it starts to burn. The the burn itself is coming from something. You you didn't know the dagger did this, but he starts to shake and the light starts to go through his skull and light him from the inside. (laughs) He gurgles in pain for an extra 10 points of radiant damage and you did not see that coming. Excellent work. Ina, you are next. What would you like to do? Ooh. Okay. How far away am I from him? Uh, 50 feet. Let's see. How do I roll an advantage? All right, what if I hit him from this side with rare frost? You may do that. Perhaps it's 60 feet. Um, on a hit, it takes 1d8 cold damage, and its speed is reduced by, by 10 feet. Very good. Cool, that's Why? good. Do I have to save, or do you have to attack? It's attack roll, okay. I think, yeah. <gasps> Go ahead. 16. That, that will hit. And then damage is 8 The ice damage. peaches are across the deck and slams into his side, touching his shoulder and icing all the way up his neck. The crystals start to form on his neck. And he looks back and part of his neck cracks even as he turns against it. Mm-hmm. That is, how much damage was that total? How much damage was that, I'm sorry? I'm sorry? How much eight. damage was it? She did eight Wait points. One second. It was eight, it was one, eight. yeah, it was just eight. eight. That's Thank it, very yeah. Very good. Rocco. Well, I'm going to spend a key point and activate my uh, flame snake fists and turn my fists into whips of flame. Oh, 
Nice. And I'm going to proceed to attack him to try to get him away from me. And then I'm going to use my mobile feet to flee without a broken attack opportunity to <laughs> run move away. Back. Give me those attacks. 70 feet. And Brother Tobias, you are next. Excellent. Right, so the, I got uh, oh, yeah, sorry, yeah. an 18 to hit on That's the first good. one and a 22 to hit on the second one. That will do. Yeah. And damage is eleven points of damage, and then I fly away from him seventy feet. You leave two burning bite marks on the front of his body, and then pull yourself off of his blade to get away. Brother Tobias, Shirako takes off. What do you want to do? I drive that flaming sphere into those barrels to end this boat. Ah. And you do so. It reaches the end of the long hallway, and you all feel the kathroom. The entire ship begins to shake and up and shudder. Oh, man. All right, so make dexterity saving throws, please. Not something I'm good at. That's a good at. Eleven. Eleven? Twenty-one. Twenty-one? Fourteen. Fourteen? Seventeen. Seventeen? Six. Six. Uh, I can just four. out for a thirteen. That's you, six. You <laughs> all can manage to keep your feet, except for Cece uh, and Commander Ledros. You all get, you, Cece gets knocked back. Boom, Commander gets knocked back, and the ship starts to crack and fall and starts to buckle towards the middle <laughs> because there's no structure holding the ends anymore. So it just cracks. The Commander and CC start to fall towards the middle. You guys are able to grab onto something, but the ship is going. What do you guys want to do? I want to try to grab CC um, and fly her. Wait. Can I swap CC her for dice? I'm sorry, what? Can I swap her out her six for my 13 from my divination? You can do that. You give her a shove or and she's roll like, back. And it is done. She's able to keep her feet and you helped with that hugely. Now, the ship is falling apart and breaking in towards the middle. Ledros is in kind of in the crack. So imagine a book like this and he's here in the middle and the book is starting to break and oh. fall on him. You guys are just on the edge of the crack. So it's not a whole lot better for you, but you still have your feet. He does not. Everything is breaking. The ship is folding. The entire ship is falling in on itself. What do you want to do in your next move? We're all um, clear. In slow motion with, with bits of wood and everything like flying all over the place, definitely. Give me an athletic check. You start to run. The rest of you? Uh, <laughs> dive and grab CC and fly her out. Boom. Give me an athletic check for that. Uh, 22. You dive Eight. and grab her. Eight. <laughs> Eight. <Brother laughs> Tobias is sliding in towards the middle. He still has a speed, but he can't move towards the planks. I have a six on the athletics check, but can I cast Levitate? You can do that, oh. absolutely. <laughs> you begin to levitate, and that is no longer a concern immediately until the walls close in. Yes. Oh. Uh, Hina? I would like to cast a uh, feather fall. It's a first level transmutation. It choose, I can choose up to five falling creatures to keep oh. them from falling. So ah. And with that, the ship breaks and folds. You guys, with the help of the one who can actually fly, you're falling slowly, but you, and you're out of reach of the dock, but he can come and grab you well before you get wrapped up in the rest. The Yay. ship falls away, and the Phantom Eyer <laughs> hits the water in two separate pieces. The Phantom Eyer. Yay. No more. <laughs> the Rocco flies you back to the top of the dock, and you guys watch all of the mist follow the ship to the bottom of Bilgewater Bay oh. as it falls in, in, in you. The team of the Dark Tide are victorious this day. Yay. With one loss. 
Rest in that peace, Arnold. Yeah. Yes. Oh, Frank, <laughs> not. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Cragnox. Cragnox. Oh, Cragnox. His taste. <laughs> he, when you can't run away fast enough, that's just the way it is. TJ, wow. you have the guy Gax. This is not good karma in this game. I... <laughs> <laughs> oh, I didn't think about that. Uh, don't feel bad. Lots of people have killed him over the years. Yeah, yeah but where are they now? Still <laughs> Nobody still knows. Jim Ward has killed him more than anybody, I think. Oh, man. <laughs> You guys, uh, everybody at home, thank you so much for supporting uh, Founders and Legends 3, The Dark Tide. Uh, thank you from to our guests. Our guests are absolutely amazing, and they, they gave our their time to help us out with an amazing <laughs> charity, uh, Extra Life. Thank you guys for giving and for showing up and for playing. Thank you so much to my awesome players uh, for putting so much into this. And thanks for joining us at Founders and Legends 3. Stay tuned for Into the Iron Mist with Into the Mist. Thank you, Jay. And how much money was raised? Um, Does anybody know? 345. Just from the dice rolls. That was just from the dice dice rolls. Just from the dice rolls. I will (laughs) make a pledge to, I will double that. Yay! Yay! Baller? (laughs) That is awesome. You guys, thank you. Being a generous person. Yeah. (laughs) You're awesome. Thanks for watching, guys. Thank you. Lovely playing with you guys. It was so fun. Goodbye from Australia. (laughs)